<laughs> it's fine, bad juju. Don't worry. More to learn from, dude. More to learn from for everybody. All right, let's start. Should we do it with volume off or on? Probably a little bit on. Wait. All right, well, hopefully the audio is not too bad. We're going to leave it on for now. Turn up a little bit. Yeah, scalping. I got five that I'm gonna I'm gonna use today. So, is this the smite music playing right now? All right, so we got an ama gameplay. So first and foremost, I think the most important thing when it comes to solo lane is confidence. Right? You don't want to be overconfident because then you're just being stupid. But you need a you need to have like a good level of confidence, no matter if it's a bad matchup, whether it's a good matchup, whether it's an even matchup. Like, for example, let's see. This game, Ama is going to be against an Osiris. So Osiris, obviously a big lane bully. I talk about it all the time. Uh, DMCA, yeah, yeah. I think it's just a smite music, though. If it's pretty sure it is. But so yeah, Osiris is a big lane bully. I mean, he wins almost every matchup. And this matchup actually isn't too bad for Ama right now with Berserkers because she has so much sustain that she can kind of heal all of Osiris's poke. And she can kind of, like, uh, actually box with him because her early game isn't really that bad anymore ever since they made... Um, or two hit really hard. So it's really not that bad of a matchup, but I think like you you have to be pretty good at Ama to like and have played this matchup to do well in it. And um I would say that like 70% of the time Osiris is gonna bully this matchup pretty hard just because like I don't know if Amas are like most Amas are really that comfortable in it. So you've already made a pretty big mistake. You've tanking minions. Osiris level one is like probably one of the best in the game. Especially if he gets his one, which he did, and you take him way too much poke on the first wave. Which, I mean, obviously you're fine right now, but you've already used two of your pots. You're really, really low. And I would, uh, I'd be playing for, like, the level twos slash threes in this lane. Osiris is going to poke you out really hard early on, so you kind of just got to be wary of that. And now that you are Finioc, poked, I wouldn't try and play up on the wave Finioc, H-Y-P-E, Finioc, H-Y-P-E, Finioc, H-Y-P-E, Finioc, H-Y-P-E, Finioc, H-Y-P-E. Okay. Awesome. Thanks for the four months, bro. Welcome back to the Ponza family. Once you get poked out like that, you kind of just have to play back and use your, your pots and your, like, Warrior's Blessing procs and your uh, one to your advantage. You're going to get poked super hard right now. You might even die. And this is just, like, I mean, still lane's all about the snowball effect. Like, if you play the level one poorly, it could get you killed at level two, which it almost did. Um, but it's going to cost you, like, the rest of the lane. Especially if they don't make mistakes. Obviously, if you make a mistake and then they make a mistake in return then it's going to be like pretty much even. But um, yeah, I would say from the get-go, that I mean, the major mistake that you've made is that you just played up on the minions. You tanked the minions, which took a, made you take a lot of poke. And whenever you run at the archers, whenever you're playing against a, like a high-pressure character like Osiris, if they decide to like follow you to, the, to their own archers and just hit you, which is what they should do because they can poke you out really hard, then you're going to get owned really hard. So you're already out of pots. Good thing is you did get totem, so you can kind of just send in your tower and spam your ones for sustain. I would also be trying to hit my uh, like twos from range on the Osiris just for some procs. You gotta be careful here. Run back under your tower. Yeah, taking a lot of necessary poke. Like I said, I would, at this point, after losing all your pots and kind of just getting a little bit too owned, I would just probably send in my tower a good bit and throw my twos out from range. Sustain up with the, the man I'm getting back. You're gonna die to minions here. Oh my good. Yep, you did die to minions. Just kind of not recognizing that uh the long range poke. Like Osiris, when you're sitting under your tower, the problem with Osiris and why he's big a, a big lane boy as well is that he his poke, like while you're just sitting under your tower, is pretty unmissable as well. So I would just uh use my TP here because blue buff is up. I probably would have um let's go back. So once you make that mistake and like you're kind of in a bad spot now, you die. You have 800 gold. I would probably just get a uh, tier one boots and a chalice and then TV back to lane because you're going to want to stay out for a good amount of time. You could also just uh, go chalice and TP back, which is fine as well if you really want to like get to that berserkers. But the problem is at this point, it's going to be hard for you to... The point of having TP and like a non-movement speed first item like berserkers is that you can obviously you don't have to walk back to lane with it right but if you are now in a spot where you're gonna have to like decide whether to go boots or uh berserkers i'd probably just go boots now so that you can actually like run back to lane without losing out even more you know what i mean 
But I definitely would use my TP here because even though you died, T when you have your TP up, it's really not that bad to get soloed. If you TP back in and still get the XP, then you're fine, but you didn't get this wave, so I would have used my TP there. And make sure you get credit for blue. Don't want to lose that on any small XP because that's just going to increase the snowball effect of you getting behind. Definitely would have tried to get credit for that blue. You're only you're only gonna miss like one minion if you uh, got credit for blue and then ran back to lane. And now you're in a spot where he's here, so he's poking out. He is level five. You do have some kill potential though. I wouldn't just be autoing him the whole time. I would wait a second. Nice for you to get out at least. He did force his ult, which is nice. Still haven't grabbed your blue though, which is an issue. He can kill you with uh. Oh, nice try. Unfortunately, you're gonna get ganked and killed here. I mean, I don't really mind how you play that too hard. The only thing I would have done is once you realize you had kill potential and he kind of like was fighting into it and didn't realize, like at this point, once he's tanking these minions and he's really low, like right here, you notice that you like maybe have kill potential. I would have just stopped hitting him because he was going to get pretty, like he was already pretty low and he was going to get low from these tanking these minions. I would have tried to kill this minion so I could hit four because you were one minion away. Just try to focus the minions and then obviously gone on him afterward once my two is back up because you're not going to kill him if you don't have your two up he's just going to sit there and trade with you in his full passive got to be careful fighting into osiris when he's in his full passive because he is very tanky very hard to kill at least you have berserkers and a chalice now and your tp is still up so that's good that is one benefit of not walking back to lane but i would say that you were it's not like you weren't confident in this lane in fact maybe you were too confident because you like ran to kill archers when you probably shouldn't have which is like the major mistake there you already seen but um like i like i like that you're still like fighting into him and stuff like i think a lot of people there wouldn't have like tried to trade back with him when they were already behind and like they may have not had that like kill potential and you do have berserkers now and uh you actually fight pretty well once you have berserkers like i said this matchup isn't really too bad this is really good you're playing this very very well i like exactly everything that you're doing i would have popped my pots though and his ult come back up. Oh no, that's unfortunate. That's unfortunate timing on your um on the kill potential there. I like everything you did. Uh the only thing is maybe you could have uh known that his ult was back up if he already had Glad Shield when he ulted and had a blue buff. The 75 second cooldown on Osiris ult, right? So it's gonna be up pretty often. But I like I mean I like what you did. Like I said, you are like confident fighting into him with your berserkers, which is like a really strong power spike for you. You actually out traded him really hard. Um, the only thing I think you could have done to make sure that you wouldn't have died and you might have actually killed him. So you do everything right. I like what you're doing. You're poking him out, winning. If you had pots going this entire time, he would not have killed you with his ult too. Because the only reason he killed you, he ulted you, he hit it, and then he two'd you and you died. If you had popped your pots during this fight, pots are really, really important. And like pot management is really important. But if you, whenever you're in doubt, just spam click them. If you're like in a really tense 1v1 and you're just like, you're not very good at managing your pots, just spam click them. So if you had your pots going this entire time, you wouldn't be 400 health. You'd be probably like 550 maybe. And then the only time, only other thing I would say is don't barrel stuff him with your ult here. I would also try and juke with the last hit of your ult. Because if, assuming that he also knows what he's doing and that he's fighting into you because he's going to try and jump over your ult, which I mean most good players or at least even level players would, then you should try and juke with his last hit of your ult. You're just sitting in the exact same spot, getting even closer to him. He just has to up, down, and then he hits you with it, and then he twos you and kills you. So if you had your pots going, and you just tried to juke the last one, you would have not died, and you probably would have killed him. In fact, you may, maybe you wouldn't have killed him because he would have just jumped away, but that's a win. It's basically a kill, right? So Switching stances? Yeah, he could also switch stances, but he didn't even need to if he... Uh, I mean, it's a good, uh, like, it's a good shout. Good measurement either way, but... And then you have to walk back to lane, and now you're at two levels down. Which, I mean, I'm not completely... Like, I don't completely hate. One of the times you should have killed him, or, like, at least poked him out really, really hard. You got ganked, which is unfortunate. Maybe um, recognize that maybe he was baiting. It's the only thing. And then that time is just a small thing. If you had your pots and maybe juked on the last hit of your ult, you definitely would have gotten a kill, so... Um... As far as the the wave management right now, you are down three levels now. I try and get out of this tether so you don't take a ton of unnecessary poke. I would have just used my dash way earlier. Whenever you get tethered, 
whenever you're playing against Osiris and he tethers you, you need to, depending on your matchup and what your like options you have available, you need to try and like avoid either get out of the tether so you don't get stunned. Obviously, like if you can dash out, then do that. But there's also other things you can do. You, you can like sit in your wave so that if he tries to auto attack trade with you, he's going to be hitting the minions at least. Um, you know, they'll be body blocking for you a little bit. And then if he, um, if you're like playing another character that can maybe like stun him right when the stun is about to hit you, you know, um, that's also an option. That way, like you're both stunned during it, so he's not really going to poke you really hard. They did get your blue buff, and I don't think you really could do anything about that. You're like just focusing on your waves. It's not the worst thing in the world to not have a blue buff as a Berserker's character because you get Berserker's back for every auto that you hit. I like that. That was actually kind of smart. Um, like I said, just getting out of his tether. Don't be afraid to go towards like their side of the lane to uh, like avoid them. The only thing you got to be careful of is a jungler on the way. The only thing I also would have done there after dashing away is probably walked into the jungle instead of walking back into lane. Because something you can do, just a small thing real quick that might help you guys. Something you can do is instead of hitting this wave with your two and then walking all the way back down towards your tower, you can walk into the jungle and then it makes it really awkward for the enemy soul lander to clear the wave and try and poke you. Because if they follow you, well, then maybe they're trying to kill you and they'll just run you down. But if they follow you, then they're going to have to worry about the wave that's coming. And a lot of times they'll just worry about the wave because wave is really important. So. It's not always like something that you can do. but And also if their jungler is like around, then it's you're basically just asking to be killed. No, this isn't me, Mystery. I'm coaching my viewers. But yeah, Cyrus is another one of those characters that, like, if you're, like, not too experienced in solo, he'll bully you no matter what character you're playing for the most part. Your blue buff is up. You did just see it spawn. Remember that right now, I don't know if somebody could be watching this fucking 10 years from now, but right now in Smite, blue buff spawns every two minutes. Every buff spawns every two minutes. So blue, red, purple, all the above. So your blue buff just spawned. Could have maybe gotten the, like a rough timer on it before, but you can kind of assume that Osiris is on it right now. If he's missing and he's not on a wave that uh, he should probably be on, it's probably because he's invading your blue with the lead that he has. And you'll probably see that it's down here in a second. Yeah, unfortunate. You do have a rough timer on it though if you were paying attention, right? Paying attention to the map and everything. It spawned around 8 minutes. It probably took him like 6 seconds to clear, so it's probably right around 10.06. So if this is a competitive game, or if you just want to get better in general in your ranked games, you can help your team. You could write 10.06 in the chat. Just be like, 10.06, blue buff. So that way your team knows when the blue is up, and maybe they could actually help you with it in the next time. You're not going to get poked too hard here. I mean, you'll get poked, but you can just use your ones. And your TP's up, so you basically have an extra life. Got to be a little bit careful, because you are low mana, though, just without the blue buff. Also, I'd be trying a little things that you can do, like whenever you're behind, is just randomly hitting the soul laner once your Warrior's Blessing proc is available. Not only for the sustain, but also just to like get that stacked up quicker. You missed two minions there. Definitely shouldn't have missed those minions. Like I said, it's a snowball effect, and every little XP that you can get it will get you back into the game. You just missed two minions. You've missed some blue buffs now that you possibly could have contested if you knew the timer on it and tried to keep it after uh, seeing that they had gotten it. Um, but, I mean, it's not the worst spot ever. You are going to be behind in Osiris, but Osiris falls off a lot harder than, obviously, Ama does since Ama's kind of a mid-to-late game warrior. And here is commentary. Wait, who's commentary? I'll turn it up a little bit. I don't want the volume to be too loud, but... Look at this. I actually... This is, like, good. This was the confidence I was talking about. Like, fighting into an Osiris at three levels down with Berserkers is actually, like, not too bad. Like, you can see that you're actually trading really well into him. Nice. That time you did it a lot better. Maybe you learned from the first time to actually, like, maybe, like, maneuver around with the last of your ult. But you're like trading well into uh, an Osiris who's ahead of you. Ooh, unfortunate. If you were able to get your three or your two off there, you would have lived. Maybe you wouldn't have lived, but you would have lived longer because of the damage mitigation on your two. You had pots going as well, which almost saved you, but you're just kind of getting getting ganked by uh, Anasia, so it's a little bit unfortunate. I don't really think it's like your Kabrakin's fault, but he also like uh, hasn't really helped you too much as far as like the blue buffs and stuff. They still need one more stack for that Warrior's Blessing, Warrior's Blessing, which would be re really good to get. If this was good on the, or if this is the new patch, then stacked Warrior's Blessing is really big. 25 of each prot. Need to make sure you get your waves here. Waves are the most important. 
You don't think you're ever going to kill this guy if he just straight lines out. And this is really bad because you're missing your wave. Waves are so important. At least you get three minions. Not, I mean, not the worst thing to look for. If you do get that shutdown on him, which he may be shutdown worthy, like he may have enough kills for it, then maybe it's worth it. Yeah, wards would help as well. Wards would help with the ganks, but they wouldn't help with trading into the Osiris very well. You know, like, the multi-pots that she's buying actually have helped her a little bit with the trading. So it kind of depends on what you want to do. I actually really like this. You see that he TPs in. You know that the next wave is coming. One of the most annoying things you can do when you're behind is go proxy. Because if they follow you, you're already behind. They're not really going to get a whole lot for coming to kill you. And if they don't follow you, then you get some free farm in and possibly, like, a rotation. Or maybe you can go to a jungle buff that will get you, like, a little bit more XP so you can actually get back into the game. So they do come to you. What I would do right here is I would run straight to their Phoenix. Seems like an int play, and everyone always thinks that, but if they follow you again, like, it's just wasted time for them. They'll eventually kill you, but... There are three people here, so, like, ideally, maybe your team pulls something, but they did just back, so that's something that you have to keep in mind whenever you're going for proxies, is, like, what your team is doing. So you see, right when you dash through the tower, you see both these guys are backing, so they actually do kind of have a free time uh ganking you here not really much your team can do when they have back to base you know you gotta be looking at you should always be looking at the map ideally but even like especially when you're like trying to proxy or make like plays like that you know what i mean you're zero and five but honestly it's really it's really not that bad unless your team is also behind like if your dueling was feeding this game then this game would probably be over but um it's really just that snowball effect. You play the level one bad, then you start losing the lane, which you probably didn't need to, and then you also um, it kind of forces you to play like the level two and three bad. The margin of error is a lot smaller once you make that really big mistake level one and get poked out really hard, you know. Yeah, he is getting ganked a lot. Definitely unfortunate, but he's also kind of a an easy kill because Osiris is going to poke him out really hard. You gotta kind of assume that that blue buff is down. I would just throw a vision shard on that. I would probably at this point stop buying multi pots and getting some wards out. Like wards would have helped you, but it's also about like map awareness. Like if you don't see the jungler on the map, like that should give you enough information as well to at least play a little bit more uh, careful. Doesn't mean that you have to like sit under your tower the entire time, but if you're also already getting poked out, then maybe you should sit under your tower. Uh, if you had your pots going this entire time, you'd be in a lot better spot. Notice that you just now pop your pots. If you had your pots going that entire fight. It would have been a lot better. Sometimes you will pop your pots, and then sometimes you won't. So if you just keep, um, if you just practice po uh, popping those pots every time you fight, then I think you'll be in a lot better of a spot. <clears throat> um, I, I think it's fine to just like sit under your tower. Then you get this tier one, whatever. Like nothing you could have done about that. You probably would have died if you contested it. This is fine. Keep trying to pop that chalice. You need to pop that one as well. Again, if you pop the chalice, you will get a return kill for this. Hopefully, Kraken doesn't take it. Nice. That's actually huge. You get shut down, I'm pretty sure. You get breastplate off of that. Your TP is up. That's actually a really good kill for you. Slash, like, good death. Um, sitting on your tower, you kind of calculated it. Either way, Kraken was going to get the kill, so it would have been good for you. But that's actually really good. You were able to get it. And um, I don't even... I actually don't even think you would have died if you popped your chalice the entire time. So now you're only three levels down. You were five levels down, which is a ton of XP. I like that you TP here. It's just like more time to just farm, right? You're just trying every little thing to get back in the game. Every little thing that got you behind, you want to like make up for. So you can just TP in, get this wave, maybe run to your back camps now. I'd run straight to my back camps here so that I can just keep, uh, keep up the hyper farming from behind. Osiris is still dead for three seconds. That means I can get this blue buff for free because Neja's dead as well. I would go hyper farm these two camps. Just boom, boom, clear both of them. Even fuck it, ult it if I have to. Um, it's really not too bad to also go for the wave just because like it's free pressure and then you can run to your buffs. But keep in mind that Ama two is a pretty long cooldown. But you do have the breastplate, which is nice. Ama two is a pretty pretty long cooldown without CDR, so you actually do kind of hyper farm with the CDR that you have. So it's kind of a decision that you have to make. The build is pretty standard and I like it. Berserkers, Ninja Tabai makes you just like box so well into everybody, even Osiris. Like we've seen like she, this uh, Ama's been like two, three levels down like almost all game and she's still fighting into the Osiris pretty well. Small things make her lose the fight like not popping pots or not juking or, you know. So it's really not a, really not too bad of a matchup like I said. Even doing the jungle shrine for the boys, you're going to be behind in XP, but I, I doubt at this point that you're really that far behind in gold. 
you're able to just solo two buffs, which is really good. You got a kill, got it like a couple ways. And this is the way you get back into the game. Now, at this point, your team is only down 3k at 15 minutes. You have an AMA late game over an Osiris, which is obviously much, much stronger. So you're actually in a pretty good spot. You also have Breastplate at this point, so your power spikes are pretty insane. I would be really, really annoying with my proxies because you're going to have a maxed one as well, so your sustain is going to be crazy. Your movement speed is going to be crazy with that. And it's going to be really hard for this Nejah to gank you. It can be really annoying, at least. So I would push that wave and then dash towards the tier two and push another wave. If the Osiris follows you, you're just going to be able to like run away from him. Your dash will be up before he can really like run you down. So, plus your movement speed is going to be higher. Thanks, Commander. This is another confidence thing. Like, I think at this point, if you kind of realize that, like, you know, I'm, you're not really into that that bad of a spot now. Like, you can fight into this. Like, you're you're going to be fine. I would uh. It, me at least, like if I was confident in that, I would probably start like proxying and be really annoying. Um, whenever you're in this situation where your tier one is down and you are like kind of playing under your tier two, you do have the option to freeze the wave, just sit there and let the minions kill themselves near your tier two, so that like if they play up, then you can get a gank and you can kill them, and it makes it really hard for them for them to farm waves. That's why I always talk about not wanting to kill the tower. But it's an it's an Osiris who's level seventeen, and you have a Kabrakan jungle. You're never gonna kill that guy, so. Or if you do try and kill them, they could just go gold and it won't be worth it. So I would just hyper farm. Really well played there. Jim, you this done with your uh, ult. That's good. You did four speeds. Osiris ult is as well, which is really nice. Kind of a random ult. As far as the second relic goes, I think Thorns is fine on Ama. It's definitely like a, a good a good pickup here. Um, something you can also go is Sprint or Shogun's. Or not Shogun's, but uh, Frenzy. And then also go Shogun's for the, the team fight. I think you're playing this fight well, staying near your team, keeping your auras on them. Osiris ult is down, so you should probably maybe VGS something, say attack, enemy ultimate down, so your team knows. They may not know, you know. I'd be in my uh, my power stance this entire time. Notice the try and keep a micromanage on your your auras, because if you're in your aura stance or your power stance this entire time, then everybody around you is going to be hitting a little bit harder, and uh, maybe you kill this guy a little bit quicker, and maybe he doesn't even have the opportunity to get out, which he almost did, because he got a four man tether and then tried to walk away. He's going to die no matter what for the most part, but there's some situations where he would. So, would be able to get out. So, just kind of try and keep an eye on the uh, auras at all times. Kind of know what you're in. Comes with experience playing AMA, but also just like... It's the same as like looking at the map consistently. Whenever you can like kind of do stuff secondhand, like sit there and auto attack trade, pop your pots, look at your abilities, look at the map consistently, then you're going to be in a good spot. Good way to secure the gold fury, using your AMA silence to stop somebody from out securing you. One of the best things you can do around objectives on AMA or in any character with like guaranteed good CC like that is to just wait till the gold fury is really low and then use your, your CC on the enemy so that they can't um, feel it. This is a little bit too greedy. You don't need to go for all this stuff. You just got a gold fury, you had a good fight. Like I would just run away and go farm. Especially cause they could come back and try and look for a kill. You're, you're gonna be really hard to kill, but just don't be, don't be too greedy. You have a lot of jungle up. See what next item we go. Thor's is fine because they have a Jing and she's probably gonna build crit, so it actually ends up working out. Shogun's I like. Only problem with this build is you have no health in your build. You have a ton of sustain, so your effective health is really good because you have sustain in your one and then your pots and then you're also your berserker, so it's really not too bad. You can get away with this build, but I think on some other characters that don't have as much sustain, like let's say I don't know who, who's a freaking character without sustain. I don't know. Can't think of anybody. <laughs> Every character in this game has sustain these days. Um, yeah, yeah, Cuckoo. There you go. Cuckoo with this build would be actually pretty squishy because you don't have any extra health and then you also have uh, no sustain. Apart from Berserkers and your pots. You don't have like an ability that gives you sustain. So, But Shogun's is really good. I do like the Frenzy Shogun's combo. Thorns is also fine this game. It's just kind of like preference and what you're trying to do. You are going to be diving pretty hard, so it's, uh, Thorns is fine. But um, should try out the Frenzy Thorns or Frenzy Shogun's combo. Just gives you so much damage, not only on them but around objectives. And Nama's really good around objectives because they're passive. That's another reason she's really good late game. This is good proxying, making it really annoying for Osiris to deal with you. Now he has to deal with a wave. A little wave management is either you get the tower here, and Osiris comes to the team fight. Or you don't get the tower and you have a 5v4 over this team fight, or at least you have a man advantage of the team fight. So either way, this is really good. Good proxy. One of the best proxies you can do is make it really hard for them to decide what to do. And obviously it's gonna be a good fight for you guys in mid. You know that Mori's beads are probably still down? No, okay, they, they had just come back up. Not really keeping 
a mental timer of that. But it's still good to force her beads. And this is like, look how long. You, you have like 30 seconds. Osiris is just now getting here. Not 30 seconds, more about like 20 or 25. But you have about 20 or 25 seconds where you just had a huge power play on them. And you're winning, like you're winning your... I think you said in your Discord that uh, your team kept you in the game, which they did, but right now you're kind of winning your team the game with this uh, rotation, where uh, you just kind of out-rotated the Osiris really, really hard. And you're one and six, but that's just like, that's just a number, you know? Like, if you're still confident and you're still playing the game well and doing the things necessary to get back into the game, which you 100% are right now, then this is a sick gameplay. You can learn a lot from this. A lot of people can. Now, your team did keep you in the game, like I said, but it is... Uh, like, that's, I mean, it's a team game at the end of the day. It's not fucking, um, you know, Call of Duty. Where you can go get 60 kill, drop 60 kills and carry your team in a game of Team Deathmatch, you know what I mean? You can definitely carry in this game, that's not what I'm saying, but. Uh, right here, this is good. You and the other frontliner are just zoning while your team does pyro. You're just getting those small objectives to get back in the game. And now you guys are up 3k with, like, a pretty good late game comp, I'd say. Better than theirs, I would I would probably say. And now you're denying a blue buff with the uh, pressure that you have while Osiris is dead. This is good. And now you're ahead of Osiris, basically. I mean, he's still level 18, level 17, but you're about to get a wave. You're about to get uh, another blue buff. Possibly back camps if you go for those. Um, Alma's one of those characters that's kind of like... She's attack speed, but she's also ability base, you know? Where... Uh, She's just kind of like a hybrid, similar to like maybe like an Erlang or similar to. Like every character's auto attacks are really important, but your team's just fighting in mid after kind of like a, a one fight. I would say I would just try and hyper farm at this point. Whenever you get an objective or like you win a fight and you have stuff to do, you need to go take stuff off of the map immediately and back with your power spike so you can actually use the gold that you got from winning a fight. You know what I mean? Or getting an objective. So I'd probably just go clear this wave and then back. You do see them top left, always keep an eye on your map, so you can see that they might be coming over here, so I'd probably just clear this wave and get the heck out. Make sure that you have your two fully charged so you can actually kill the archers. I don't know if you didn't. So you see them, you should not be surprised by this gank, but it shouldn't be that big of a deal. You should be able to get out pretty easily. Might just want to ult this. I probably would just have ulted the Osiris tether, just so no chance of getting stunned by that. No need to pop your thorns, your dash is about to be up. It's a small thing, maybe a little bit too scared, but I'll just dash out, dash away, dash away. No! Unfortunate. So, played up into the gank, and you kind of knew they were ganking, so that was kind of bad. But even then, like, you, you kind of, I feel like you should have known that you wouldn't have died if you just, like, played it well. Um, try to stay in your, like, movement speed dance for as much as possible so that you can just run away. And then also just dash earlier. I would have ulted the Osiris Tether as well. I hope you go at health item here. I would not go Spirit Robe. It's not the worst thing ever. You are going to be full CDR with this. You already were with the blue buff. But, um... I would like to see some health. Honestly, Magi's isn't even that bad. Frostbound is fine. Um... Well, late Frostbound, I mean, isn't ideal. But it's just going to give you, like, 300 health. That's going to be pretty good. Bit of damage when you dive their backline. Uh, Cat Shield wouldn't be that bad. It's only got 100 health on it. But at least it's, like, giving you both... Uh, it's giving you... Sustain with your one, because it's going to increase healing on that. It's also going to give you 100 health. And then it's also going to give you uh, props for each damage type. But if that was me and I saw them coming over, I would have just cleared that wave and then know that they couldn't have really killed me if I just ran away with how tanky I was and my movement speed and my ult and everything. Kind of a panic thorns as well, but... Yeah, only thing I would say about the build is just a lack of health, so somehow try and get some health in there, but... Blackthorn could work as well if you really wanted that. Just for the health. Just just something to get, give you a nice amount of health here. If you want an aggressive option, I would just go Frostbound. Even Void Shield gives you 150. And Cat Shield also gives you, even though it gives you 100 health, it gives you more effective health as well because you're healing more. You know what I mean? So, more effective health there. And, um... As far as the next step in this gameplay, I would say uh, you should probably be, you know, calling it a uh, fire giant pretty soon. You're going to be really, really strong at the fire giant. You have your thorns up. You are level 20. No way they could ever walk into it. Your team's kind of winning the game by killing people in mid, which is fine. Your right tower is under attack. 
You do guys you guys do have two picks right now. I would probably be calling a fire giant after dewarding it, which you did, which is nice. This left tower is uh, just so ripe for the pickings. We need to kill this thing. I would just walk under a tower and kill it. You're gonna not take any damage from it because you can just one. You are gonna get the tower now. As far as like how the early game and stuff went, I'm not really that surprised that the tower has survived for so long, but I finally get it. I was about to say, did, did you not get it though, Cyrus, defend it? You're not full clearing because you don't have any extra power, I'm pretty sure. That's why the archers aren't dying in one hit a year too. Only uh, problem here. This is fine. I mean, you're, lo you're both level 20. Like, if he's going to decide to hit you, then so be it. You're just going to run away. Go into your movement speed stance. And you guys are owning in dual lane, which is fine. I mean, you guys are going to win this game, like I said, because your team is doing really well. But you also made a lot of good plays to get back in this game. And you definitely contributed, especially with that one rotation in mid that kind of opened up the game as well. So, you know, from here, it seems pretty standard. You guys are up with a late game comp. Especially you yourself. You're now, like, ahead of a character that's going to fall off pretty hard. Make sure you're in power stance here so you can actually, like, auto this down and secure it before the Najah gets here. Good job getting it, at least. But yeah, try and be in power stance whenever you're, like, clearing or, uh, like, fighting near people. Unless you need to be using the movement speed stance to get away, you know? Osiris is padding stats. That's what Osiris is do, man. That's just how it is sometimes. Early game, it's not them padding stats. They can genuinely kill you, but... Mid to late, them running at you and hitting you a lot of time is just padding stats. They still will out trade you and do really well, but if you're an Ama with your one max, you can literally just heal it with a chalice and just run away and be more useful in a rotation. So yeah, one thing I would say to try and learn from this game is uh, for anyone, but even this guy, is to always stay confident, um, especially if you know your matchups, which I think you did this game. I mean, you were fighting like three levels down and doing well, which kind of tells me that you knew what you were doing at least a little bit. And also uh, stay confident with like your proxies and like the way you're wave managing and everything like that. I think a couple times you could have proxied this game and you would have made it really, really annoying for them to um, like come to you or deal with you because you're already behind and they don't want to gank you. And if they don't gank you, then you just get a free time to rotate for extra farm to get yourself back into the game. This is fine, I think, to go for. Good job immuning the uh, Jingwei knockup with your ult. Only thing I would say is that you are committing pretty hard um, to this when you're not really ever going to hit the Jing because she's just going to dash out. However, they're Osiris and they're Cthulhu on you, which means you're going to win this fight. Even though you died, that what that tells me is that you're winning the fight because their support and their soul laner are hitting the enemy soul laner, which means either they don't know what they're doing or they just thought that that was the right thing to do at the time. Not really watching your teammates, so I can't really tell, but it looks like they won the fight really hard because you just got all in, basically. It's a good initiation by you. The only thing I would say is that it's a little bit weird to just force a Jingwei dash with your ult. Like, it's a long time. Hashtag L I F E T I M E S U. But you guys won the fight for it because they kind of played it poorly. So maybe the, the decision that you made kind of make them, made them play it poorly, but for the most part, you kind of want to. I would have just, like, kind of uh, waited a little bit, used my sustain, my chalice, and my one there to heal back up before I initiated. And then look for a slightly better initiation. But it ended up working out just because, like, they played it pretty bad, so. Vinian, thanks for the four months in relating lifetime sub. Hell yeah, dude. Thanks for the four months. Dude, back-to-back -back four months. Appreciate it, though, guys. Welcome back, Jake. And there we go. The invincible glitch cheating. What? Yeah, so what can we learn from that game, chat? What do you guys think? I think, uh, one, keeping your head in it and keeping your confidence even when you get behind. Little snowball effect from playing off of the level one. I mean, from the get-go, when it comes to the laning phase, you got to start, like, knowing how to play it and uh, doing it pretty well. So if you just didn't mess up that level, like, the very first level one where you tanked the archers and the Osiris came to you, um, most good players will come and hit you and get you really, really poked out if they're if you're just, like, focusing on the archers and not really focusing on them, if they're playing a high-pressure god. So you got to be careful of that. And then, uh, other than that, I would just say maybe a little bit more map awareness for where the jungler is. If he's not on the map, then you got to be wary of possibly getting ganked at least and then also uh using your pots again like if, if you're new to the game and you're you're really like you can't like micromanage and keep like a timer or like a, a mental note of like if you popped a, a pot or not or if you just like really can't like be bothered or capable of looking down and seeing the timer and how much uh pots you have going or if you even popped one then um just spam pop them if you're in the middle of a fight and you're 1v1ing somebody and it's going to be close just click c and z or whatever you have it uh Key bound to. If it's console, then whatever buttons you guys use on console to pop those things. 
But either way, dude, I, I actually really like that gameplay. I think people can learn a lot from that, and I'm pretty sure uh, you actually did play it pretty well, all things considered. Obviously, apart from the early game. And you said in the you said in the notes that your team carried you, but I think I think you kind of carried your team as well. So, GG. All right, what should we go with next? That was AJ with the AMA gameplay. Why are you typing Resident Sleeper in the chat, Tio? Answer is Twizzler. Thanks to Twitch Prime sub and WBP. Welcome to the Fonza family with the Twitch Prime as well. Both of you, I appreciate you guys. Froggy's here. I said that I would do uh, Bad Juju's gameplay because I think he said he had to leave pretty soon. So we can do that one next. We'll do the console game real quick. And Kaido Kid with the tier one. Let's go. Welcome to the Fonza family, Kaido Kid. I appreciate you guys' subs, dudes. Dudes? Dudes and dudettes? Guys and gals? Quality isn't amazing, but it should we should should be able to get the job done. Super Yeet Boy with the Twitch Prime. Welcome to the Fonza family. I appreciate it very much, man. Thank you, thank you. You watch from a spectator? Uh no, I, I can't. Spectator is trash. I'm not gonna use it. When I do these, you have to use a YouTube link or a Twitch link. And also I want to watch it from the person's perspective while they're playing, because that's where that's where I play when I play. That's where you play when you play, so. Possibly PA address, yeah. All right, little set gameplay. Appreciate you dropping the solo knowledge, Fino. Yeah, of course, Andy. Thanks for the two months of Twitch Prime. Welcome back to the Fonzo family. Much appreciated. So a few things starting out. I mean, he's got Morningstar. What, are you going to go Transcendence? A little bit ambitious to just, like, from the get-go decide that you're going trans Transcendence. But, I, I mean, I like it. Um... Also, it's not really bad to like hold a point, to not hold a point as set because no matter what ability you grab, it's going to be hard for you to get away if they like look for a gank on you. Plus, you're just kind of sitting under your tower anyway. Usually, you want to hold a point in your ability just in case you want to like like switch up what ability you're going to grab level one, but obviously, you're going to be grabbing your one as set. And uh, if you're just sitting in your tower, it doesn't really matter. Plus, you can't really get away anyway. No, I don't, Alps. Yeah, of course, Chance, bro. I'm going to try and host people more that deserve it. Seemed like he deserved it, and he was really cool. Liked him. Um, I like that you're starting wave. Sets clear, especially with this morning star. A little extra 10 power. Actually, pretty good clear, so you're going to be able to clear and get over to your blue buff. I always tell people, um, whether you want to start your blue or start your lane, you don't ever want to start your blue if you're trying to just dominate the lane really hard and get level 2, because you're not going to hit 2 if you start your blue and then do the wave, because you're going to miss out on minions. Sorry. The reason you start your blue is to help out your jungler so they can get to mid quicker, so they can possibly get a kill on the mid laner, or possibly invade the red buff, or possibly get minis. Just They can get a lot off of it, right? What you lose in return is possibly totem pressure. You maybe can't get the totem for your team. Maybe you can't get level 2 and like really out-pressure your lane. Um, so it's kind of just depends on what you want to do. Pretty funny matchup. It's Set versus Horus. Which is pretty troll, obviously, as far as lore goes and how it works in-game. Thank you, Brothis. Happy 4th of July. You do have uh, physical mitigation in your 3, so keep that in mind when you're fighting early game on Set, which means you're going to take less damage from minions. But this is New Warrior's Blessing, I believe, so you are still going to take a lot of damage either way. You're not getting that reduction in each uh, hit of the, the archer shots. <clears throat> so far, not too bad. You don't really have any sustain early game besides your Warriors Blessing procs in your pots on set. Horus has a little bit more sustain, obviously, with his three, but he also doesn't have that long range poke, so. I actually like what you're going for here. Gotta be a little bit careful if you take the minions and he stuns you in them, you might die to it. Unfortunate. What I would have done is something you got to be careful of is that, like I said, good players or at least people that know like that they can kill you or pressure you out, they're going to come to you when you go to the archers. They're not just going to sit here hey, and Alec, the I had a random question in regards to armor. Didn't get a chance to ask, but when is the best time to switch stances with her? That's their main issue I have is always trying to figure out when to switch her stances. Thank you. And love the streams. Yo, Keen Hunter, thanks for the $5. Yeah, with Ama, it really just kind of depends on the situation that you're in. If you need to sustain, then just spam click your one. I would just click it. It doesn't really matter what stance you're in. If you're just using it for sustain, click it. 
And then um, whenever you are like running around at the beginning of a team fight, I would be in my movement speed stance. Just like round your team so they can juke abilities, juke poke, try and look for something because you'll get in range with your movement speed. And then I would switch to my one right before I initiate so I can get that extra power so I can actually try and kill somebody and it'll help me kill them. Plus it's a low cooldown and if you have a, if you have CDR built, it doesn't really matter too much what stance you're in, to be honest. If you have like full CDR, then just spam click that thing. Um, around objectives though, always be in your power stance. Around phoenixes, be in your power stance whenever you're just DPSing stuff down because the extra power is going to help you with that. And then, yeah, pretty much all there is to it. So right here, like I said, he's going to come to you. He can't clear those archers. He's going to have a hard time. He's also already like kind of pressuring you out. After jumping on these minions, I talked about the last gameplay. I wouldn't walk back towards the my minions. I would just have walked into the jungle, making it really annoying for him to try and clear, you know? Um, and also, I wouldn't have hit him with my one there because you re-aggroed the minions there. So the minions started hitting you after you won him, which got you. You probably would have died either way, but it, it really ensured your death, you know? So just a, just a small little mistake there. Maybe you don't go for that in general just to jump on the archers, but I don't really think it was that bad. Like I said, I just would have walked towards the jungle, made it really awkward for him. So two gameplays in a row where you made like uh, where we've made a, just an early mistake, which is I actually like that. It's good. It's not the end of the world, especially when you have TP, guys. If if you make a mistake at level ones, two, three, four, and you die, even if it's first blood, and you TP back in. It's seriously not the end of the world as long as you keep your confidence and don't get like tilted and everything, right? So that is a lot of potions to go, but to be fair, you didn't really have any other buy item to buy, I think, and you are going to be staying out for a while. You even got to sell your blue buff, so really not the end of the world. You are a little bit behind in XP. Obviously, horse is level five, but no big deal. The easiest way to clear uh, anything with set is to walk up to the minions and place. Uh, your two like right in front of you right before you hit, get to the minions and then just one through it And it will follow your one like this. This is a good example of doing it but Some people like to make it like more complicated than it needs to be. No, you can't be taking minions Whenever stuff like this happens you don't need to it, when you notice that you're already getting really really low Don't turn around and hit them tank the minions and then like delay your your escape, right? Look how many look how close you get to dying just from archer shots You do have a ton of pots. So we got that going for us Dude, Horus, Horus uh, early game is really, really good, Kriga. He has a ton of pressure, but this guy is throwing his lead right now by diving your tower. Whenever you ult this set, you want to use your three. So that was a drop kill there. Horus, uh, or not Horus, set three and ult are obviously a wombo because your three procs your ult. The dots <coughs> proc your ult. So I would always just uh, kind of proc, always click three. Whenever you click four, click three and then start going on somebody. You would have gotten this kill if you had uh, popped your three. He barely got out as well. I maybe would have looked for a two over the wall here and then three to it because you might have actually still caught him. What? 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 <laughs> the horse is three to the wave. <laughs> well, this guy's trying to clear it and he hits him for it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. That's what that happened. Well, you ended up getting the kill anyway, but just a small micro thing is always pop your three with your ult. It's all good, Kunkel. That prediction, dude, Mr. <laughs> Mr. President, get down. Dude, what a prediction. You can see the future. You do have, you had like 90 seconds of pots going, which is kind of crazy. The better and better you get in soloing, the more like, the better you're going to get with pot management. And pot management is actually like a really big thing. Especially for drug dealers. Um, yeah, anyway. You did get a kill back into this lane, which is really good. Obvious for obvious reasons. So now you, you're probably in not too bad of a spot. You but you would have been in a pretty bad spot. Because you probably should have died when you tanked those minions and he poked you out really hard. But um, Something we should always... I, I wouldn't make a video on this, but spacing. Spacing is super, super important when... uh. In solo lane, but I mean it's, it's important in every lane, but especially in solo lane when you're trying to I always talk about like whenever you're in the wave and Like whenever somebody can use an ability on you plus the wave so they don't it's like they kill two birds with one stone They poke you out and get the wave cleared That's where like spacing comes in if you can like avoid certain abilities by like knowing the distance of them 
or knowing like uh, I don't know maybe like the travel time or something like that, um, then it's gonna be, like you're gonna be able to micromanage like the lane a lot better. For example, this game you're against a Horus. Um, you should know that like he's gonna be trying to two you like through the wave ideally for him, but you should also like try and know the range of it. If you ever go to the archers to clear and he starts running towards you, then just start running away. And if he if he can't reach you with his two, he's gonna get no value out of that. This is good, using your 3 and your ult. Good little combo here. Only thing you gotta be careful of is the archer damage, but... Not too bad. It was a close fight. Only thing I would have done to make sure that the uh, that it wasn't as close... Is I wouldn't have used my 3, like, escape right away. So you jumped on your 3 right away. What you can do is 3. You can click 3 and ult. That way you still have the escape up in, like, 4 seconds if you need to use it. Say the fight's going bad right now. And you already click three and you, you're owning this guy, but you notice that the archers are hitting you really hard and you're taking a lot of damage. You can still th uh, throw a clone away and then just TP out. If you TP in right away when you're fighting in lane with somebody, then you, you kind of take away that option. So I would just three and then TP out if you need to and kind of save that TP, right? And again, yeah, this is another person that's not popping. Well, you had your, you didn't have your potions popped the entire time, did you? Yeah. So your, your potions weren't popped this entire time. Last person we watched kind of had a problem with pot management. And like I said, it's a really big deal. Like if you have pots going this entire time, maybe you're like 700 health and this fight is not anywhere as close as it was, you know? So you ended up popping it, I think, towards the end of the fight. At least you did that. But like I said, if you're when in doubt, just spam click those pots. Who cares if you over pot or if you mess up? Especially right now because you, you can just stack them. Like they'll go forever, right? Your chalice plus health pots. TP's back in with Transcendence, which is cool, I guess. I wonder what the build is going to be. I do like Transcendence on set, but I usually don't go at first item. I prefer like a physical defense item so you don't get out traded early just because... This coaching stream is really speaking, cool. Thanks for taking your time to do it. Generally speaking, physical or defense uh, out trades damage early game. And then mid game, it starts to fall off. Zeroing, thanks for two months of Twitch Prime, bro. Welcome back to the Fonzo family. You keep doing this with your three. Uh, what I like to do, like I said, is I pop my three, tank the minions plus the enemy soul laner by hitting them with my three, and then uh, group it up, and then I clear it. And then I can three out if I need to, if they try and fight me or whatever. See, but this entire time you didn't have the option to jump away, and it's kind of a... Uh, you're doing it again. Something, Just something that you should uh, probably try and do instead of just TPing right away. Trading well into him, though. I don't really know what the horse has as his item. It's got to be really hard to hit your set 2 plus 1 combo on console. I mean, it's already harder on PC sometimes, so. Um, but whenever you're in a bad spot, a set kind of similar to Ama, you can kind of just use your... Uh-oh. You see the Merc gank? Oh, no! Something we haven't even talked about is, like, the matchups and the gods is... Like, Mercury, you really got to be you really gotta be wary of uh, lane ganks with him. We can talk about, like, how to avoid it in a second, but... Did you use your three? I think you used your three to dash in again. Oh, wait, no. You just kind of used it uh, aggressively. See, like, if, if you had a set, if you had a clone ready to go here, and you used your three like that, right when you saw this Merc, you could have put a two near the totem and then TP'd right to it and gotten out if you had, like, really quick reaction or ready for it. So that's, that's the benefit of using the three like that instead of using it to TP right away. You do end up dying for it, which is, you know, it's just whatever. Merc ganks are pretty good. But do you die? Yeah, you die. Merc ganks are pretty, pretty good. It's something you got to be careful of. And again, it's going to come through the lane. It looks like you get a return kill. Oh, no, Chuck! Oh, unfortunate. Um, Whatever you don't see Merc on the map, and uh, the enemy soul laner is fighting into you, but they're not really doing well in the fight, I think most of the time you should give people the reasonable benefit of the doubt, where if they're fighting into you and they're kind of getting owned, you should probably assume that something else is afoot, like something fishy is going on, right? And that maybe you're getting ganked. And especially if it's a Merc, just have your eyes peeled down the lane. And just to see. Because you can see the animation coming. And you can kind of juke it if you see him all the way over there, right? It's pretty easy to see them most of the time. Something you can also do is get a ward right here. And place it like right here where he would be coming to lane gank. Uh, early on in the game. That can completely that can completely deny um, a Mercury lane gank. And it makes it really awkward. Because what you can do is if you see the Mercury in lane trying to gank you... You can bait it really hard. You can like kind of play near the wall, but act like you don't know that he's there, and you can make like completely waste his time because he's gonna sit there for a lot of the time to try and gank you. And then you can do this little mini game where you're like, 
oh, come gank me. But then you're like sitting at your tower, so he doesn't want to ult. And then you go under like a behind a wall, then he doesn't want to ult, and it just completely wastes his time. So it's good to get that ward out if you can. But again, always keep your, your eyes peeled down the lane if there's a Mercury and he's missing on the map. And they're fighting you like kind of oddly. As far as like the console like micro uh, play with the your, like your abilities and your auto attack cancels, it really hasn't been too bad, so it's, it's pretty good. Um, kind of a wasted ult there. Again, whenever you ult, you need to use your three. Also, keep in mind that whenever he has his uh, whenever he has his um three up, you want to make sure you have a three up or a two up to get to wherever he's going. If he's gonna three to those minions right now, you should have a clone up so that you can also follow him if you're gonna try and all in him with your ult. So try and keep that up. But also, again, this is probably like the third or fourth time you've ulted without using your three. Potential procs there, just gone. And also, when you throw when you throw your um, minion like that, remember that you can TP to it. So if you want to chase him out and keep diving him or go after him, then you can TP to that bad boy. You keep missing the, uh, the teleport, which is, I mean, it's fine. It's just like a micro thing you'll get better at. <laughs> That's Horus Burst, baby. Look at this. He proc shreds you with the two. He wants you. If he has Golden Blade, I think he has Golden Blade. He just hit you for 300. That's that Horus fucking burst, man. That's why he's fun to play sometimes in solo. But again, you also don't have defense, so it's going to hit you even harder. That's why I would say go Glad Shield, Boots, and then Transcendence if you're going to go for that Transcendence freaking power. I'd also grab some wards. I mean, you are fighting a lot in this lane. Keep in mind that these pots don't stack at the same time. They just refresh now. So they stack in the sense that you can go for like 100 seconds if you pop all of these, but um, they're not very good to go if you're, they're not good to go if you're trying to, if you're just trying to box somebody and use your pots to like out sustain or out trade them, then I would just go multi pot so that you can have those going at the same time while you fight and you'll just like out sustain them during the trade. I always notice that people, something that people always get pissed at me when I'm like spam tabbing in my, my games on my YouTube and all that. Yo, Wicked, thanks for the Twitch Prime sub. But I think some people, the people that I watch don't don't use their tab button enough. Like, I don't even know what this horse is building. Do you know what this horse is building? Knowing what your opponent is building and like their power spikes and everything like that is just as important to what your builds are. Maybe I missed it when he clicked tab, but click tab more, guys. If you click tab and you see that somebody has a defense item and you don't, you should probably assume that they're going to out trade you unless they make a mistake. Unless you just play it really, really well. This is good. This should be a kill. Got to be careful sitting in the way if he has Golden Blade, which I do not know. Well, let's hit it. Oh, nice try. Okay. That could have possibly been a kill, but... Nice. We popped our three with our ult this time. Let's go. Should be a kill. Nice. Good job. Horse kind of just... He gambled that he could get a kill there, and you kind of just played into it, which is fine. I think you knew that you wouldn't die. You got your ult off. Ideally, you get your three off, and then your ult here. Your three is still on cooldown. Okay, that makes sense. But you did use your three right away this time, which is good. And this time, you got a kill for it. Hmm, the time you use your three with your ult, you get a kill? Huh. <laughs> yeah. Something we can definitely learn from this game is to kind of know what our opponents are building and what's going on. As far as the items go, items are building is very important, obviously. And then you guys are up 3k. And you you have a lead in your lane now. You're up, uh, what is it, one level. You got the tower before they got your tower. You do, just because you get a tower doesn't mean you didn't immediately start rotating. You should still focus on clearing waves. Waves are still very, very important. And the more that you just rotate and not worry about your waves, it's the more like the enemy soul laner can get back into the game. Although it's so, only two months, enjoyed every moment. It's still moment. really important. It's still really important to think about that mental timer that I've always talked about, where you, if you push a wave, especially at the tier two, you have about twenty seconds where you can make a play. You have a longer time if it's a really big play to be made. Like say you get a gold fury plus some kills, then it doesn't matter if you missed a couple waves. It was worth it for the team overall. But you still have about twenty seconds to clear a wave and then rotate and make a play. That's still going to apply once you kill the tower, chat. You still need to be getting your waves, and you still need to make sure that you're farming up and keeping your lead. It's still just as important for you to, to hold that lead as it was to get the lead, right? So, you know, obviously there's some things that you can do with your lead to, like, maybe win your team the game, and it'll cost you a lot of time of farming, but for the most part, you should always try and worry about that still. Grover, thanks to the two months of Twitch Prime. 
Welcome back to the Fonzo family. Much appreciated, man. And also, when in doubt, when in doubt, just uh, clear waves. Waves, waves, waves. Okay? If you're ever like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to rotate and this is going to go well, and there's a wave coming, just clear the wave. It can't. You can't go wrong with clearing the wave. The only possible thing that could happen is the enemy soul leaner could rotate, and they could win a fight off of it, and then you could lose the game. That's the only bad thing that could happen. <laughs> no, I mean, if you if you have a lead, it's really hard for the enemy cylinder to do that. Right here, I mean, again, he has a... Vo I can see he has a void shield, obviously, because of your debuff bar. This guy has defense on you at this point, and it's a really good defense item and void shield that helps with trading. You are going to get out-traded really hard. I would probably not fight into him. And you just got to keep that in mind. Once you go this transcendence route, you kind of got to realize that you're just going to hyper-farm and kind of be a nuisance in the mid-game. You actually might be able to get a kill here just because the Hades is ganking. Kind of got to assume that he's running over to the lane to three. So keep that in mind, a little micro play. So I would save my one there until he threes, and then I would be able to get a free one on. Does she use a... Uh... Oh, you already used your one. It should be a kill either way. What? What just happened? Did it just skip? I don't, you didn't kill this guy because you you didn't get a kill, but maybe Hades did. Can't really tell. Okay. Well, whatever just happened, it skipped. I think it, it, you didn't even need to be in that position to get the kill here or to possibly drop the kill. Just just relax for a second once you're going on this guy. You don't need to spam your one. You, you know that he's going to do everything he can to try and get away with his escapes. He has three is down because he just used it. His two is coming back up, and that's what he's going to do. Just keep using your two. Put your twos on the ground. And then wait till he uses that escape ability, and then you can use your one after. If you had your one up now, this guy's never getting out. All of his escapes are down, it's going to be a free one, but you kind of panicked. Just be a little bit patient. Wait for people to, like, juke themselves to death, you know? I guess Kronos did ult, yeah. You are going for Void, for void Shield now, which is good. This actually, at this point in the build, you are going to be slapping. And you're going to be pretty tanky, except to their Vulcan. The Vulcan's going to hit you pretty hard. But you do have 25 of each prot in your Warrior's Blessing, and then Void Shield's going to make you pretty tanky and give you some health as well. You don't need to make it more compli complicated than it needs to be on set. Just walk over to the wave, sit in front of all of these minions, put your two right on top of yourself, and then just one through them all. Now you're just going to have to sit here and kind of clear. You don't really need to. Enemy team got the Gold Fury. Uh-oh. This is going to be a closer game than we expected. Talking a lot. Sorry, guys. I need to drink some water. Chest compressions, chest compressions, chest compressions. Yeah, Dr. Mike's good. But uh, the smite version of that for me is um, waves, waves, waves. Oh, okay, bad juju. Let's go watch the uh, the rotation here. So you did clear your wave and then rotate it, which I said is still really important, which is good. Um, make sure that you're buying yourself time with your farm and your decisions. Running straight over this team fight, which is perfect. I don't know if I would have immediately threed in here. Because if you... It only buys you, what, like maybe one second of just keep walking. If you just walk into this and do what you were doing in lane and just three, and then you have your three to chase people out, that's really good. Because if you immediately use your escape to get on people, then they can escape, like, and you won't be able to chase them down, right? Um, you do insta-kill the Oleron, which is good, but... Oh, they haven't... They have Oleron Vulcan. Okay. I actually don't really like this build as much now. You need a magical defense sooner. Because if you rotate over these team fights with no magical defense apart from your Warrior's Blessing, these two are going to swing on you. They're going to smack you. I would have gone maybe Cad Shield here so they can get uh, some prots from each from each side of the spectrum, physical and magical. You're probably dead here. You're juking back into them. I would have just kept walking. You don't ever want to juke back into the people that are like still going to be able to cast on you. And they get a kill for it. And the only reason you died there is because you got smacked by this Vulcan. So he hits you with a Vulcanol over here. Pretty sure. Yep. There's Vulcanol. 640. You play up here. You get hit by a Meatball as well there. Then I think you get hit by a Backfire. Get hit by a Backfire here. Another Meatball. Yeah, you get hit by another Meatball and then a freaking another Backfire or something. Now you're 1 HP. If you had Magical Defense throughout this entire fight, then uh, you could have gotten away with a lot more. That's, that's kind of the beauty of being a tank is... People are always like, oh, like, it, whenever you, if you guys have been, like, big fans of SPL for a long time, everyone's always like, dude, S, soul laners are so good, like, everybody in soul is like, blah, 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 it's so good, you know, people always say that, 
It's just because the margin of error for tank tanks from ahead is really big, man. You can get away with a lot. Like if you had Runic Shield here, let's just say, you could have gotten hit by three more of those meatballs and you would have got you maybe would have died, you know? So just keep that in mind when it comes to that. You're kind of you're kind of building up that margin of error. Making it bigger and bigger where you can get away with a lot more, and that way you can like abuse a lead or um abuse like your, your tank items and everything. This guy's kind of just eating this guy's damage. But yeah, definitely a big deal. Building is obviously a big deal, and I didn't really look at the enemy team, but I, after realizing that they had a Vulcan and an Ola run, which I should have noticed earlier, I would have switched up the build a little bit. You could have even gone Runic Shield. Like, it doesn't really matter that you don't have defense for their Merc and Horus, because you can just play the, the Lucy Goosey game where you're trying to run away from them, right? Um, and that's probably what you should have done once you didn't like really have defense and you elected to go the Transcendence route and everything. I would go on these guys, to be honest. My beads are up. This Vulcan is being really greedy with his sting. Um, unfortunately, you got knocked up there and weren't able to get the the uh, start on them. But yeah, you do need some dedicated magical defense. Once you already have this Void Shield, you need to go like a... Like, a, hopefully this is just a Runic Shield. You need to go a dedicated magical defense item. Even fucking, like, Genjis, Onis, Bulwark of Hope. I like, on set, obviously, I think Bruiser items are better, so a Runic Shield would be nice. But I would get Runic Shield into Cad Shield here. Into like Heartseeker, and that would be a pretty nice build. But I would I would wait to go catch you, and you need some magical defense right away. Shaft Shield, he said? Yeah, yeah, I'm just saying, like, my thought process in the moment should be right now, if you were like playing this game right now, you should be thinking, I just realized, well, maybe you didn't just realize, but you just saw that you got hit really, really hard by Vulcan Oleron. You know, they did a lot of damage to you. Let's get some magical defense. If you hadn't noticed it before. Whenever they have two mages, you should probably realize that, like, hey, like, I need some hey, dedicated Fonzo. magical defense. That's a lot of damage. Hey, Andrew, thanks for the Twitch Prime for four months, bro. Welcome back to the Fonzo family. You did you did give up your tower here to rotate to this fight. The only reason it was it went like that is because you kind of just, uh, you got poked in mid, then you went over to solo, and you didn't really, like, play the loosey-goosey game here, right? Like, right here, I would have freed to that minion. Not let this guy poke me for free. Because now you're getting stuck under your tower. You're throwing away from him as well, which is, like, bad. Like, it's good to throw away from him, but to be to be put in that position is bad. And then also, like, right here, you kind of, like, let him just, like, have all this pressure while you're under tower. And again, like I said, waves are still really important. You need to make sure that you push the wave and then rotate. Because now he just gets a free win off of it. He pushes the wave, gets a tower, and you're not even at the fight for another 10, 15 seconds, right? So I would have pushed that wave and then rotated. Keep that in mind. Even if the tower's down doesn't mean you should just be randomly rotating the fights. That's something that we can definitely learn from this game. Good of you to be here, but I'm pretty sure your team was winning that fight either way. Don't really know if you contributed all that much. They Hades ult three people, and Jock and Hades basically just kill them. So... Didn't really contribute all that much, and you could have saved yourself some XP and your own tower. Skipping around. Just so that we're not here till uh, 8 p.m., you know? <laughs> For all the gameplays is what I mean, not just, not like this gameplay. Yeah, you do have a, a bit of gold. You could get your power spike, and I would recommend, like... It's a general rule of thumb. When you have enough gold for a power spike and you're maybe like new or intermediate into the game, then I would back and get my power spike. Um, obviously, there's always farm to be had on the map. And there's always things you could be doing, which is, you know, it's good to to be looking for that. The better you get, the, the more you'll be able to like manage that. But uh, for the most part, power spikes are really, really important. And it's going to allow you to like do what you want. You're actually behind this horse. And this all comes from that the wave management where he was clearing waves. He got a tower while you rotated. And... Even though you guys did well in that fight, you guys were going to do well anyway. And now this horse is in a spot where maybe he can like potentially carry this game with the levels that he has. Although, he did just get... He kind of inted with his ult there. He maybe could have gotten out. And also, it's a horse at the end of the day. Like, horse isn't going to hard carry a, a game, you know? But if he was like... Maybe if he was Ama, If he was Ama and he was a good Ama and he got to level 20 before you, maybe he could have uh, made some impact in the game and maybe like done a little bit better than you. Did his job, you know? So make sure you're still worried about those waves. I would just fight this guy. I would have... Uh, so, like, when you're running away from him, you made it really obvious that you were afraid of him. Like, right here, 
you have two charges of your two up, I would have used a two on myself and then one him just to get him a little bit poked. And then if he decides to go on me and I can't kill him, I would have threwed away and then maybe forced his ult to try and kill me. But I would just like try start trying to poke him right now to kind of like, there's like a lot of mind games that you can play. It's all about confidence. Like if I'm telling you, if I was like in this situation and I two one to that Merc and poked him for like 400 damage, say that I just hit it perfectly. He'd be like thinking, oh Jesus, is somebody else here? Like maybe I shouldn't go on this guy. You at least like make him second guess himself. And if he does decide to go on you, then uh, you can just three away at the end of the day. But you were poked from that fight and left, so he was able to get the kill. Not really too much you can do from th about that, except except for maybe uh, back for your power spike. So you weren't in that position to begin with, you know? You do go cat shield. Like I said, I think I would have rather seen you go runic shield here just because you do need that dedicated magical defense. The l left lane, the soul lane, is a wash right now. The minions are just in the middle of the lane. You don't really need to worry about your waves over there. And this gold fury is up, which is the oni fury, which is a really important gold fury. And it's also 24 minutes into the game, so you definitely should be around your team right now. This should be a clear sign to just rotate over here and look for a fight. However, you do not have Runic Shield. You don't really have a ton of magic magic defense. You have 107, it says. You're going to get hit by him pretty hard. So, ideally, in this team fight, you have Runic Shield and you just dive their mages and just kind of own them. Um, but since you have Cad Shield, you're going to have to play it a little, little bit more calculated. Again, it's about the margin of error. If you have Runic Shield here, you can do whatever you want in this fight for the most part. Um, so far so good. Um, our three is going to be down, down now though, so we would do not want to use our ult. We want to make sure our three is up every time we ult. Kind of just placing clones around, really not doing all that much. Get Jing ulted for free, kind of boosh beads it. Boosh beads is basically when you use your beads after the CC is already applied, so you get no effect out of it. Um, this is bad. We're, you're going on both their tanks. That is not your job. First of all, as most Solanders, it's not your job. But as Set, of all people, Set's like one of those characters that always wants to dive. Always. I mean, it's not it's not all that bad because your team is doing well diving them. And, like, you, you're getting some damage on these guys. And it's really not, like, all that bad. But um, just as, like, a pretty strict general rule of thumb, uh, make sure that you're always going on their carries as Set. You're going to one-shot them for one. It's really hard for them to deal with you. It's going to be hard for them to get away. And if you have defense, um, they're not going to be able to turn on you. You're just going to heal and be too tanky for them. So it ended up being a decent fight for you guys just because I think you guys are ahead. We actually aren't ahead like in Golden XP, but I think your Chalk and stuff, and your Chalk and Hades have just been diving this Vulcan and all the run and stuff really well all game. So they're kind of just still owning them. But you should still help them with that. You guys have an OP team comp. <laughs> it's not OP, but it's like... You guys just run them down. Cthulhu, Chalk, Hades, Set, Scotty. Like, you guys run them the heck down. I think, again, the margin of error in this team fight would have been much larger with a dedicated magical defense item. And I know I've said it probably like four times, but it's probably the biggest mistake you've made this game. That's all. But, and like, even the micro things, like, even you deciding to go on their tanks there instead of their carries could be stemmed from not having magical defense, right? You got poked out by that Vulcan. You're like, oh, maybe I can't go on him. And then you decide maybe to go on the tanks, and it's just because you didn't have that defense, you know? No, nosy boy. Can't be flaming. In general, I do like the build. Like, if they didn't have double mage, I really like this build. Especially, you go the heart seeker last item. Um, ways are still important to grab. But the way, the slow way that you're playing with these waves is really bad. When it's this late in the game, you want to be in the team fight and like helping out your team. It's at the, at the stage where it's, you know, we're basically at the team fight stage. You should still be getting waves, don't get me wrong. But if you are going to be over here, you can't be sitting back like this and just letting him clear waves in front of you. It's really, really, really um, crucial to make sure that you have the pressure to rotate over to a team fight. Like right now, it's been about 10 seconds where you're just sitting right here. You're still afraid to go for it. You know that your team is in mid. You could possibly be getting ganked, be getting ganked here if you uh, didn't have wards. You see them in mid right now. You need to push up that wave and then rotate. You're wasting so much time here. And now you end up clearing the wave while your team is rot or in mid and the horse out rotates you. And that just gives them an opportunity to uh, have a power play on your team, which is not good. You do follow the rotation, which is obviously ideal. You do want to be able to follow rotations. Um, but you didn't even have to be in that spot, you know, if you've just been a really aggressive with your wave clear. That's why proxying is so good because it makes you super aggressive with your wave clear. 
Another thing is you're already on the side of the map that you're possibly fighting. If you have a lead and you guys are fighting on their side of the map and you proxy, then you're going to be able to rotate to that fight a lot quicker because you're already on that side of the map. Um, but it also just buys you more time. It makes it so that you can like uh, get that wave quicker so that you can actually get the XP and be on your way, you know? So kind of getting chased out by an Oleron here. You probably have turned on him a little bit sooner just because he was kind of out of position and you saw the chalk was coming to him on the map. So always be looking at the map. Even in team fights, you should keep your eye on the map to see where people are, even your teammates. Especially as a solo laner and a jungler, if you guys keep your eye on each other on the map or just in the game, like through the walls and stuff, um, that's really good. It's really good to keep synergy with the jungler because you're going to be diving with them a lot of the time. What does it mean to proxy? Yeah, it means to clear the ways past the a like normal spot basically it means past the tier one most of the time but it also means past the tier two some of the time and uh um we're gonna go back and watch this real quick i'm just gonna explain proxy real quick so it just means that you're buying yourself more time because when the wave spawns towards the phoenix right behind the phoenix it takes 30 seconds for the next one to spawn right so if you wait till the minion wave reaches the middle of the lane that's when it, it's 30 seconds that's when the next wave spawns right if you wait till then to clear the wave then the next wave will already be at like the tier two or behind the tier two. So if you proxy behind the tier one, it buys you about 10 seconds more of time to um, like look for stuff on the map basically. Because if you're always clearing the waves in the middle of the lane, then you don't have a lot of time between the like each wave. You don't really have a lot of time to walk into the jungle and then come back uh, to the next wave. So you're just increasing the amount of time to look for an opportunity. It's like opportunity cost, basically. So, hopefully that explains it well enough. Yeah, this, it's just this magical lack of magical defense is really killing us here. Unfortunately, you don't get the kill here. You just miss your one. That's just a micro thing. Get better at that. You will get better at that, and I'm not saying get better at that. Um, but also, you probably have saved your three. You didn't need to really three in here. Seems like that was probably my biggest like micro thing on set is that you use your three pretty poorly. Like you don't need to use it right away to like jump on people. I would use it to chase people out rather than jumping on them. I would have just walked in there, used my one on him. If it misses, whatever. Then maybe I can three after him and kill him if I really want to go on a freaking uh, suicide run, you know. Um. Actually, a pretty close game, dude. All things considered. But yeah, th th I think the most part for this game, that's, it just comes down to building and just like a little bit of pot management, a little bit of uh, managing your three, not using it to just chase people. Like, don't use it to initiate right away. You can use it to chase somebody down by clicking it, but not teleporting, right? Like I said, because then you get the mitigation. You can kind of run them down with the slow immunity and stuff, but then use it to chase them out, right? Because if you were playing, it's kind of like the same um logic as it seems like you guys kind of just win the game here oh gameplay's over well you guys are owning you just basically got a ds side and i don't know yada 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 we learned a lot from that i think it's like the idea the same logic of uh say you're playing a willix right and you um you knock somebody up say you're playing against a bacchus you knock them up and your ult is up but you know they have beads right so you you, you knock them up or maybe maybe you don't maybe they don't have beads. You knock them up and then you ult them right away. You ult them to yourself and then they just jump away anyway and you can't chase them down, right? If you had knocked them up and then chewed them and then forced their jump and then ulted their jump, now they don't have an escape to get away, right? It's the same logic with uh, like a set three. If you can force somebody's escape by just running at them with your one and your three, um, obviously don't use your three really early because then you're gonna it's gonna go on cooldown before you can use the teleport. But if you just force their escape with your one, your auto attack damage, maybe you ult and like start autoing them with the attack speed you get from your passive, and then they jump away, then you can use your teleport to chase them down, and then it's basically like there's no way for them to get away, right? So oh they surrendered? Okay. So it's kinda it's kind of the same logic there. You want to force people's escape and then use your escapes to chase them down, especially if you're playing a character that's going to be diving really hard, which obviously set is going to be. So just some notes to take away from this game. Once we realize that, I mean, it took a while for me to realize, but if I was playing in the game, I probably would have realized sooner. Just look at the enemy team comp. Uh, counter building in solo is really important. When they have two majors, definitely go magical defense a little bit sooner. Um, try and manage those threes, just a little micro thing. 
Um, as far as lane goes, pot management, you can learn a little bit from this game. Try and make sure that you're popping those pots whenever you're fighting in the 1v1. Um, and also wave management, make sure that you're always focusing on waves, first of all, but also making sure that you're like not being afraid to get some pressure by clearing it higher up in the lane by either proxying or just clearing it really high up. And don't get locked in lane, right? You don't want to just sit there and clear waves all game. You definitely want to rotate. But the way you can rotate is by um, creating more time for yourself by clearing higher in the lane or proxying or anything like that. So, <clears throat> Yeah, we good? Any questions for that game, guys? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, and yeah, the last thing. Actually, probably the most important thing is I don't think you click tab enough. It's different on console. Whatever button you have to click back, options or whatever it is. In general, when I watch people, I don't think they click tab enough. I don't think I reckon, I don't think I saw anyone's build this game. I don't remember seeing it. Maybe I just missed it and I didn't pause it, but um And everyone's always giving me shit because I spam click tab, but I'm doing it for a reason, dude. Keeping a track of everybody's builds and everything that's going on is really, really important. Especially as a solo laner, because counter building, or at least changing up your build, is probably most prevalent in solo. Every other role you can kind of just build some standard stuff. So What would be my build in this game? Uh, I said it earlier, but I would have gone trans boots if if I was gonna go this option where I went transcendence first item. I just would have gone transcendence boots, runic shield, cad shield, void shield, because you can delay your physical defense pretty hard. And since I I feel like I could probably just get loosey goosey against Merc and Horus, I wouldn't really need physical defense right away. But if I wasn't if I was just like playing in this game from the get go and I didn't um, like go his build, I would just would have gone. Uh, boots, Glad Shield, or I don't know, I would have gone Glad Shield, Boots, Transcendence, Runic Shield, Void Shield, Cad Shield, and then sell my Glad Shield or Boots for Heartseeker. That's what I would have gone. That physical defense, that little bit of physical defense you get from uh, Glad Shield would have carried us through the landing phase, and it would have made it so we could have actually bought like a better magical defense item against these two characters, since we didn't spend as much magical, or we didn't spend as much gold on our physical defense item, if that makes sense. Didn't delay our magical defense at all. No, that's fine. It's fine to fi it's fine to try bad juju, and I'm not even saying it's bad. I actually really like damage on set, but it's just about uh figuring out what works, you know, and what like you're trying to do with the build that you're going. Um, all right, what do you guys want next? Ares, Wukong, or Thor? So for Ares, it's gonna be Paracat. For Thor, it's gonna be Slade, and then for Wukong, it's gonna be Frog. Keep in mind that the Thor gameplay is like a master's level gameplay, so that's gonna be more advanced stuff to learn from. Um, Wukong, I'm not really sure what you are, Frog. <laughs> and then Ares, I have no idea for what Barricade is. It is Mage's Blessing Ares, though, so that's a little bit... That's a little bit interesting, isn't it? Thor? Seems like a lot of people want Thor. Frog? Frog? I think maybe we save Thor for last, since Thor is probably the highest level gameplay we have. My video is not on YouTube, is on my Twitch video list. I'd care if you would still go see it and coach it. Uh, might be able to, Jay. I do have, it's July 4th, so I'm going with my parents later. And I don't know how many gameplays I'm going to be able to get through, because I'm already doing five, and it's been an hour and a half. And I've done two. So that's about, you know, I don't know if I'll be able to get to it. But thanks for the $3. Okay. Um. All right, we'll do frogs. We'll do frogs then. Why not? Frog with the Wukong gameplay. You should always uh be wary of the matchup you're in right when you get into a game kind of just much like, love fine if i ever to get a solo game do i need to donate for you to watch and coach hope you're well anyway kidsley thanks for the three months man uh whenever i do coaching streams you can just send in gameplays and it's just kind of like random whether i pick you or not whether it's a good gameplay to learn from and everything so you don't have to donate or anything um be positive so yeah, whenever you load into a game in solo lane, you got to be wary of the matchup and kind of keep a, like, go into the to the lane 
kind of knowing what how the lane is going to go. You should always kind of have a feeling for what it's going to what's going to happen. For example, if you're Wukong and you're against like an Osiris or a Kukulin, you should kind of know that you're going to get your ass beat if they know what they're doing at all. It doesn't mean that you don't you shouldn't play confident or it doesn't mean that you need to play scared or anything like that. It just means that you means you need to play aware if that makes sense. If you realize like after the first two levels that they kind of know what they're doing, they're starting to beat your ass, you're getting out traded and stuff like that, then you're going to have to play the matchup in a uh more wary way in a more loosey-goosey way. You're not gonna just going to out-trade them and own them because they're worse than you, you know? Um, and it seems like you're probably you're probably going to be against a Chalk in solo. And Chalk can be a lane bully. This matchup is really just like 50-50, honestly. It just kind of comes down to skill level. And both players can kind of just like get, get around and like get loose and stuff and do whatever they need to. Bye. I would have popped a multi-pot there just so you can keep that little bit of sustain going so you can be full health coming into this lane. But no big deal. Good little micro play here to hit the wave plus him for Warrior's proc and then go focus the archers after they stop aggroing on you. Good micro play there. Did hit him plus the wave there, so you're going to be taking a lot of damage from archers. You did get your Wukong faster though, and that lasts a while now, so a little bit of damage for you. I probably would have point saved there just for a second. Good micro play though with the, uh, the archers and hitting him. Get another Warrior's proc. So what he did there, just a little small little thing. I think Frog's actually pretty good, so. Little small plays that you can learn from is he autos each archer like once, then he wants the wave and the chalk, right? So then he hits all the archers again, and then he hits another auto for an auto cancel. Only other thing is I would've hit this archer so that I actually would've one shot with my two, all three of the archers. It's a very small micro play, but you buy yourself a little bit of time with uh, archers and stuff like that, and you do it very consistently, it's gonna add up in the long run. So, um, You do have a Disco passive, so y you actually should bully this lane pretty hard, I just realized. Disco is a trump card when it comes to um, low lane matchups, guys. Keep that in mind. Could have also point saved there and then maybe three stunned him um, before. But I, I think it's fine to grab your two as well. I would put a point in my stun here and then try and stun him. Unfortunate. Just a little bit quicker reaction there, uh, Frog. If you put a point in your three here, stun him right here, he would have been tanking these archers. You could have got your two and your one off and it would have been a lot of extra poke. Uh, definitely would have rather stunned there as well. You have your passive going right now. Keep that in mind. But you are going to get poked to all hell. I think you're going to kill him just because you have a disco passive. But I just want to see what would have happened if you stunned. Let's see. So he twos here, he full clears the wave. You're you have a disco passive, which you know, and he's already pretty poked, and you have your stun up here. Definitely should have stunned. Cause <clears throat> the knockup didn't really buy you all that much time. If you had stunned and then walked away like backpedaled to get away from his tower where the minions are gonna be, you'd have uh, been a pretty good spot. Nice job spacing the one there. Very, very important to try and make sure that you, uh, like, whenever you know that Chalk's going to throw his one out to, like, stuff like that. Perfect. Like, you don't want to, I talked about it in the last gameplay, but just in case anybody wasn't here or this is a YouTube video or whatever, you want to make sure that you do not let people kill two birds with one stone. You know? You don't want to give them a free um, wave clear plus poke. And you get a kill for it because he kind of made a silly play where he toed through it. He was afraid he was going to get two'd, I guess, or uh, stunned, and then you get a kill for it. You have 30 power because of Disco Passive. You, d you literally don't have an, a power item bot, but because of your passive and your dis and the Disco Passive, you literally have 30 power there. That's just silly. Got those freaking ultimate trump cards. Do you guys actually pause? I guess you're trying to pause. Okay, you guys pause. You come get your blue buff. Right here, back. Back right away. The reason you want to back right away when you have TP up and you, you have your uh, item, like you have your power spike, I don't know whether you're going boots or glad shield, we can talk about that in a second, but if you get back into the lane and he's also in lane, you are going to out-trade him so hard because you have, a spower, you have a power spike on him that he definitely won't have because you got first blood and he didn't, and you already forced some ways under tower, which you know, so you're going to have a lot more gold than him, which means you got to abuse the gold that you have because right now you haven't abused the gold that you have over him at all. Um... Obviously, you could also clear the wave and then back and maybe just wait till the next wave. But the longer you stay in the lane, the less uh, time it is for you to abuse your lead. Again, I probably wouldn't even have done the totem here. I would have backed, TP'd back in, and then started pressuring with the power spike, you know. So the quicker you do that, the better. 
<clears throat> and again, another wave you're staying for. I don't know, maybe you're staying for a certain item, perhaps? Maybe you're like, you want to go Soldier or something, so you're staying a little bit more? But either way, I would have just gone. Since I have a Disco passive, and I'm already bullying a Chalk, I would just go Boots first, probably. Which you do go, nice. You're going to absolutely one-shot. You have multi pot, so you can't do that. And TPN. You could also have gotten like tier one. You could have sold a multi pot and gotten the tier one of Glad Shield here. Just a small thing. But if you sold, yeah, if you sold a multi pot, get tier one of Glad Shield, then you'd have full boots plus a tier one Glad Shield, which gives you 10 power and 10 prod, I think, or 5 power and 10 prod, something like that. Um, just a little bit of extra stats to help you out that would uh, maybe actually pay off. Definitely right when you come back in, start, start getting aggressive. I would have used my one on him though, there. That was a little bit weird. Kind of get aggressive on him and then won the wave for whatever reason. Obviously, if you can hit him plus the wave, that's ideal, but it should be a kill if you ult. You could have killed him there. Drop kill, but it's no big deal. Bars. I mean, you don't always have to get, uh, go crazy and try and kill people under tower, because if you poke them out really hard and they're just sitting under the tower, then, you know, you're still getting the job done. I think his uh, TP is down because he TP'd into the tier 2 to go grab his blue. But I believe... Whenever you're winning a lane right now, Totem is really, really important to get. It helps you um, help out your team, you know? Be impactful for your team in the early game at least a little bit. At least for your mid laner. Yeah, you could have Tower Dove using the clone. Um, the, the clone will tank the tower for you whenever you ult, so if you just let it walk in first. Should have saved the uh, XP for the circuit there. Just a small thing. Definitely want to help out your jungler as much as you can. Just wait to auto this. She's going to be in range in like half a second. And if you cleared it right now, she would have gotten credit, so be a little bit more wary of the map. I know sometimes I don't give credit to blue for my jungler, but if we're talking in an ideal world to play as best you can, then definitely want to try and give them credit. Uh, I would be placing my vision shard very aggressively, which you are doing. I probably would have placed it on the back camps or on the blue buff, just so I can get a timer of that. So I can possibly invade it. Um, you should have like a pretty rough timer of his blue buff just because it's probably the same time as yours. So you see your blue buff timer, it's probably spawning around the same time. So you don't really need to ward it. And plus it's not going to be up for a while if he just cleared it. So you're not really going to get much credit off of that. So I would have warded the back camps specifically. Is this ward? This ward specifically doesn't really <clears throat> do all that much more. Like if you have the, the shard on the actual back camps, you're going to see when the jungler comes over here because he's going to go to the back camps first. And you're also going to get the timer on it, so you could possibly invade it with the lead that you're developing. I would trade hard into this guy. You have a Disco passive. The quicker you can get to your Wukong passive as well, you're going to trade him. Oh my god, there's voice comms. I think this Chalk has Glad Shield. Only way that he's trading that well into you. But this is a this is a kill. This played pretty fine. I don't know if you click tab. Does he have Glad Shield first? Let's see. Yep, he had Glad Shield. You could definitely tell by just how well he was trading. Um, so the only reason that was close is because he had defense and you didn't. And I guess a little bit of sustain. Ooh, greedy stay here. Gotta be looking at the map, but I guess you're you're muting your teammates. You actually survived there. That's good. Good stuff. Alright, you have enough for Glad Shield and you have enough um, and you need it back anyway, so I'd just be buying Glad Shield here. Blackthorn? What the? You don't have to go Glad Shield on Wukong, and you don't even have to, like, you don't have to go any item ever, to be honest. But when you have enough gold for it and you have to back anyway, you should 100% get, like, a good power spike item like Glad Shield. Because you would, you would just absolutely body this lane. It wouldn't be close once you get back to it. It actually might be close now, because he probably only has, like, Tier 1 of Boots now. No way he has Tier 2, right? But if he had Tier 2 plus Glad Shield while you had Boots plus Blackthorn Tier 2, he actually probably would out-trade you. But again, you have a Disco Passive. You have the Trump card. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, but yeah, keep consistently getting those totems. That's good. It's kind of like a trade-off here. Your Disco is giving you a passive to help you win lane, and you're getting her totems to help her out. It's like a symbiotic relationship, you know? Don't know why your Shaket taunted that, but I guess she did. I'd be, I probably would have popped a multi-pot by now, just so I could have that uh, little extra mana health sustain going. 
It's a small micro thing is make sure you group up with this uh, melee minion so you don't have to waste time autoing it. You can auto the chalk instead. Um, as far as like confidence and like how you're playing the lane, this is really good. You're trading well into him. You know you have a disco passive. You know that you're gonna like do really well. But again, I think if you had glad shield here, it would it wouldn't even be close. How like you guys are basically the same health right now. If you had a glad shield instead, he'd be fucking getting pounded. I like that you're focusing on the wave because you're full clearing with your one. Um, very very small thing, but I would not be going for a proxy right now. I'd I'd keep poking him out. Like you you would just. You can play to just, like, run around and, like, not fight him, but you should bully this guy out. Like, you have the Disco passive. Your stun is up. Like, you can stun him here. If you really want to go proxy after, you can. But I would, I would just keep trying to poke him out. And a very, very small thing, but it's something that maybe you could do once you get better. If you did go for the stun here, since your 2 is on cooldown, you could actually put a second point in your 3 and then use it on him. And it actually might end up getting you a kill, you know? Just that little bit of extra damage in a fight. Um... But since your two is on cooldown and you're not even trying to fight him, you put a point in it anyway, so it's no big deal. This isn't all that bad. If you clear this wave back and TP back in with the power spike, then I, I like it. I'd place a vision shard over the wall here on blue just to maybe get a timer of it. Randomly, you know. We do have the Blackthorn now. Keep in mind that uh, you did proxy, so you do have yourself, you did buy yourself some time to like do whatever. You don't really need to TP in here. I probably would just because I'm lazy, but ideally you shouldn't. And you could TP to the tier 2 here and grab those backs with your Sirket. But you could also go for the totem, which you're going to do, it looks like. Alright, you should run down this guy super hard. Should be focusing him. I would have stunned him there and keep poking him. Or kept poking him. This guy, should, this guy shouldn't really be able to play the game too, too much right now. You should be bullying him super hard. Don't feel bad for people. <laughs> Need to teach them a lesson, you know? You see Neja. Good of you to get out of the tower before the sash so you don't get knocked up. Good of you to also turn here, recognize that you could possibly kill. Um, I would just sit in my cloud and sustain up for the time being. Whenever you have a lead, it's also good to get your wards out really high so that you can play super aggro and know that when like the jungler is coming. And it doesn't mean that you need to run away. Don't ever... Tiger in front of a Neja when they have their sash up ever again in, in my fucking game plays frog. That was cringe. Um, no, but for real, whenever you uh whenever you get those wards out, it doesn't even it doesn't even mean that you have to run away when you're getting ganked. Like that's not the beauty of wards. It just knows that it just gives you information that you're getting ganked, which means that you can sit there and bait it if you want to. You can maybe tell your jungler to come gank, like, hey, set up an ambush here or attack, blah blah blah, whatever. Maybe your jungler follows the rotation, and since you have a lead, you end up getting a 2v2, and you win the 2v2 really hard because you're ahead. Like, maybe you can 1v2 if you are really confident and you're really far ahead, which you probably could have this game, or already are doing, kind of. Um, like, it doesn't mean that you're just, like, warding for ganks. That's not what it means. And it also means that you're warding for your teammates to know when they can do stuff. Okay? I don't know what, what was worse, tig or tigering in front of the Neja Sash or fucking that Gebel. <laughs> um... But yeah, I was just messing around. I was just giving you a hard time. But if you know that an Asia Sash is up, then why would you tie it? Like, you're not going to ever get it off, you know? Unless it's like a bronze level game, you know? But obviously this isn't. Um, but yeah, I mean, I like I like how you've played things so far. Just uh, try and focus on bullying them a little bit harder. Since you are pretty poked... Ooh, I don't really like this. Oh no, frog. My thought process going in here... Once you get ganked and poked and you know you kind of you kind of just need to back my thought process would be to clear this wave with my one here and then just three away and then maybe take my back if I need to I don't think you knew Emoja was there maybe you did but I guess this pathing is fine for now that Emoja is here Ooh. are you a Ghana are you a Ghana Rhea It's very, very obvious to most, like, at least, like, advanced level players or, like, inter intermediate level players. Whenever you're playing Wukong, it's very obvious when you're trying to just make some space so that you can three away with your ox. Like, so keep that in mind. You don't want to make it too obvious that that's what you're trying to do. Like, right there, you could have, you could have maybe birded. Like, if you just birded away right here, maybe you cover more distance and you can actually maybe get away, you know? 
so. Um, and you're kind of just getting run down by Yamoja at this point. Maybe you would have lived if you had uh, not run towards their side. I think the pathing was okay once you saw the Yamoja, but like I said, if you had just like won the wave and then walked away towards your tower, then I think you would have been fine. You are going straight into Void Shield. Again, I think I think a Glad Shield would have been good this game. If you're playing uh if you're playing like this because you're preparing for the next patch, then so be it. But But you also you also just need to build like those power spike items and Blackthorn's not too bad of a power spike item, but So that I think that was another uh Wukong has some pretty good auto cancels, so right here I would have uh, I would have auto before I tigered, and then auto two. You did you did auto two, and then to start autoing your ones down, so you can't auto one. But you did it there, nice auto one, nice nice auto cancel with your two as well. Again, I'm just trying to do the micro stuff because I think Frog's actually a pretty good player, so we can learn from the small things. Kind of goes without saying that he's playing the game well as far as like wave management, the lane, stuff like that. Recognizing on the map, keeping map awareness. That is a really good ward for uh, a lane gank. But I would, I'd want to see even higher rewards just because you can, again, like when you know that that rotation is coming, you can do so much with that info. Micro wise, actually, you didn't really play that that well. I mean, you, you didn't play it terribly, but. Um, didn't get any auto cancels off, right? He'd be a lot lower if you got two auto cancels in there. Um, you oxed when you shouldn't have oxed. Definitely stun. Stunning most of the time is probably better, but... And then, uh... I mean, it wasn't too bad, like I said. But some auto cancels there and a tiger instead. I think it would have been a lot more guaranteed kill. Because if he had his Neja ult there, he might have gotten out. Blue is down. Nice. I actually like that you put a ward on that. You might possibly get the time wait what it did not show up bird over to your buffs so you can get credit for it i would back and tp in here i would just back and tp in get that get that void shield right away get my second active and then just be strong in the lane uh as far as second active goes you have a lot of options here you could go thorns you because they have a who you thorns pretty good against who you because you can sit in his ult you could also go beads since they have a decent amount of cc if you're going to go more damaging build then i'd probably go beads um I would get a ward on these backs. I don't know if that's... I think it will get the timer. Yeah, this is good. These are the good wards that I'm talking about. Having the, both those wards is really, really nice for playing super aggro at the tower line. Um, yeah, again, like I said, general rule of thumb is that when you have gold for an item and it's a good power spike, just, just back. If your TP is up, that is. If your TP is up and you have enough gold for an item, just use your TP. That's the whole point of TP, you know? To instantly get that power spike and just start being even more annoying, you know? Yeah, Ankh could be good as well. That's true. Good shout. Good shout. They do have Yamoja Herc. Or Yamoja Chalk. And even Neja will heal a little bit. But see, like, since you didn't TP in back with your Power Spike, you're kind of in a spot where, like, he is uh, getting value out of dying, you know? Because he was able to spend his gold and come back with a full health bar, and you didn't use any of your, uh, your like, your tools to, like, out-trade him. If you're trying to play for that reason, like if you're just trying to play for the team fights and like you're trying to farm and stuff, it's really not that bad. But like in opportunities like this where you can bully really hard, I would recommend doing um, just like using your power spikes to your advantage, you know? What's up, Lilio? How are you? And uh, Blink is cool. <laughs> I like Blink. Oh. <clears throat> it's okay, Frog. I do that sometimes. Do you have your Do you have his three on Instacast or normal cast? It happens. Only thing I'm confused is why aren't you putting points in your three? Your three is a really good ability. Obviously, your ult hits really hard as well, and it goes down in cooldown the more you level it. But for the most part, it's more of like a CC immunity, like last ditch, like saving thing. You know, it's not really like like it's a good ability. Coach but I'd, Fine Finiac, okay. I'd much rather have my my one, two, and three maxed. The reason I like maxing, some people like to max their tiger after their their one. I disagree with that. It is it is definitely better in a straight up one v one match. Like if you're just one v oneing somebody and hitting them, 
it is better to have the tiger maxed because you'll do more damage with it and it'll stun longer and you, it'll just be better right but i think it's better on the conquest map to max your two after your one sometimes you can max your two before your one because it's a lower mana cost and that might be better for a lane where you're losing your blue buffs and stuff but for the most part max your one into your two and the reason i max my two is that it allows you to high perform really well you just one two every wave without a disco passive you wouldn't be full clearing with your one so you one two every wave one two every buff it'll be they're on the same cooldown as well so you're just con you're just high performing and it allows you to at that stage where you have your one and your two max it allows you to farm so well that you're actually getting a bunch of like you're getting more points into your three right a lot of times you're just using the tiger or the uh three for escaping you know so you're not even getting a ton of value out of it it does go down and cool down the more you put points into the the wukong three but i think the the hyper farming potential that you get from uh, maxing the one into the two just makes it so much like better because then you're just going to get like you're going to be putting points in your three after that you know what i mean like so like he would have he would have had a maxed out three right now for like for free he put points into his ult so it's like you know it's whatever but i think we're kind of on cruise control a little bit here frog I think with the lead that we have, and especially as Wukong, like, we should be, I'd be, I would have already proxied at the Phoenix. You know what I mean? All right, let's get in there. Let's, let's, let's make some things happen. Let's be really uh, annoying with the lead that we have. I think maybe you could have done that if you had, like, used your power spikes a little bit quicker as well, but. Check the speed. See if speed's up. Get a timer on that. Or look for a gank in mid. That's fine. I mean, you miss it. It's fine. It's like a small little thing, but. I like that you're. I like that you're looking at plays with the rotation you have. Um, since this is like obviously a little bit higher level, I think Frog kind of does this second nature. But clearing the wave that high and then looking for the rotation. Some of the other people we watch haven't done it, but Frog's doing it, and it's really really good because it's buying himself time. And look, now the Chalk's like deciding whether or not to farm when he's behind and rotate to, over to a fight that might end up just being bad. So you're just like abusing and pushing that lead really hard. I think you maybe could have killed there if you uh, used your blink instead of wanting them, but. Like blink tigered into your one, but no big deal. Just a small, some small micro plays I think uh, would have made this rotation a little bit better, but it's no big deal at the end of the day. I have a lot of wasted time. I actually do not like this gold fury pull. You are really poked out. You do see chalk is in left, so it will be a five v four, but you're gonna. It's more like a five or a four versus four, four and a half really, because you're already poked pretty hard. I guess Thoth was decently poked, but. See, you get killed for it. You do get the Gold Fury, so that's <clears throat> up for debate whether it's worth it, to be honest, because now the Chalk is going to get a ton of free farm in, and they're also chasing out your team. Maybe instead of pulling the Gold Fury there with the lead, you reset and then come back with your item and then pull the Gold Fury, you know? Maybe get a little bit more farm, get the item, and then come back and pull, and you're in a lot better spot because you're full health. Now it's definitely not worth it because your entire team basically died for it. Chalk got some free farm, also rotated and got some kills. It's a little bit too for forced. Just a little too forced. You should. It's good that you... Everything that you did was good as far as, like, the map play. Pushing the wave really high, looking for rotation in mid, then pulling a goal for you with the lead that you have. The only thing is, after that went bad in mid and that you were poked really hard, I would have just farmed, like, a couple more things, backed and got my item, come back to gold for you and pulled it. Possibly pushed another wave and left and then went to gold for you and pulled it, you know? Like, kind of just depends a little bit on where the, the waves are. I think if you had done that, you'd be in a lot better of a spot, and you probably could have carried that fight that fight really hard, you know. Um, and also you could have. Uh, it's fine that you TP to the tower to save it, but it should be a kill. You have your blink up and ult. I wouldn't have ulted right away. I would have saved for my. Uh, I would just would have blinked, because now you don't have your like. Say somebody turns this corner to try and peel or to try and kill you, you don't have your CC immunity to, to follow this guy or your CC immunity to just live. So I would use my blink before I would use my ult like that. That's good to use your uh, ox instead of your tiger since it's slow immune. Tiger is not slow immune, so it's really easy to just get like you would have just gotten out. Nice, this is good. Big plays. Now imagine if you had your ult here, frog. A little freaking triple for the boy. It was a double, but now imagine if you had your ult there. Look, your blink is still up.
So if you had blinked to chase the Hui and then used your ult under the tower, you would have lived and also gotten a triple kill. So that was good. Good good stuff. Chasing them around and getting the kills. Sorry? Why are you apologizing? That was good though. That was a good play. I think you could have done that as well. It would have you would have done the exact same thing if you had a back fear power spike after you gotten poked out and then pulled the gore fury. Like you probably would have gotten a triple kill in the same the same exact manner almost. Obviously, I think you got that because you chased out a Huyu who was overextended, pushing a tier two, and then they tried to help him, and then you killed them. And Neja, I feel like you've killed this Neja a couple times now, and he hasn't ulted out. I guess his ult's just been down, but uh, I think it's like diamond, right, Frog? Wait, seventeen sixty? Okay, maybe that's not diamond. I feel like you play pretty well. What is your what uh league are you in, Frog? Plat five right now, I, dude. I feel like you you don't play like a plat five. You probably just don't play enough ranked. You are definitely like diamond diamond level in my opinion. Like just some of the small like I can tell from some of the small things you do with like your auto attack cancels, like your your wave management, um, some of the things that you're just doing second nature. Oh my goodness, Panone. My goodness, bro. Thanks for the twenty five gifted, buddy. Happy 4th of July. I appreciate it very much. Can we get some hype in the chat for my boy Pinone, the mad lad? Thanks a lot, man. Happy 4th. And welcome to all the new people of the Fonzo family. Um, this is fine. I mean, you could just be pushing the wave in left and then coming over to this, which is ideally what you do. Again, like wave management is probably the most important thing in my opinion in like smite and especially as like a side laner. Um, Also, I don't have you used the blink yet, bro? If you're gonna go blink, fucking get that thing on cooldown, man. Try and make some plays with it. That's the whole point. Um, Not as soft as it looks. The, the wave is pushing in your favor in left, so it's really not that big of a deal. Like somebody's gonna have to go defend that eventually, probably. But you gonna blink on this bad boy? Yo, get that thing on cooldown, frog. Yeah, it's good of you to save your uh, your tiger there. You know that he's going to mark stun you, and if you just start tigering, then he's going to interrupt it in the middle of it. So now you have it for afterwards, so it's a good little micro play. I don't know if you intentionally did it, but it was good either way. Did force the Thoth dash there. Team is kind of just all rotating behind this tier, tier 1. Chalk did end up finally uh, following the rotation. Kind of a lot of uh, hoopla going on right now, you know? You need to try and get on this Thoth. This Thoth can't be free casting. It's your job to kill their carries, especially if it's a Thoth who's ahead. So, um, right here, I would just I would have stayed stayed in the clown for a little bit. The clown. I would have stayed in the cloud for a little bit longer, just not only for the sustain, but if the Thoth uses his dash, you can fall in with your ult. He may have used his dash to fall to get away from your ult, but I really doubt it. I think he just was like dashing out either way. But either way, be patient. Get a little bit more healing. If he dashes under tower, jump after him. Then you can use your two, one, three to get away if you need to. Then he's really poked. But he's going to free cast a little bit hard here, you know? So, try and make sure you get on their uh, their carries. Especially if it's a character who's ahead. It's going to be your job to deal with them and make them uh, not have a good time. Not let them free cast. Space for the, the ring bounce. It's fine. You have your TP up here. I would try and back right away and be ready for this gold fury. Looks like he stayed though. Sorry, I'm skipping around too much. Hey, we used our blink. Let's go. See, this is what I'm talking about. Like, I don't know if a plat player makes those kind of micro auto cancel plays. That was good, though. Only thing micro wise that you maybe could have done better is that uh, after autoing here, just like stop. Don't do anything for a second because you know he's going to use his Aegis. He's going to panic, right? Um, like, he's going to panic Aegis. So then you don't even have to like use your three. Then you can three afterwards and then guarantee the damage on it. So that way your one actually kills, you know? Because it, it, it could have been close here, maybe a little bit closer. Just assume, even in like Masters, Grandmasters, people like use their, they use their actives when they get low, right? If you just sit there and auto, like, then you can just uh, wait to use your um, CC till after. Yeah, yeah, that's what I do, homie. Especially in SPL. You are marked, so you will be able to get stunned when you land here, but... 
Oh, the Emoja ulted you. Keep in mind that none of this would have happened. I'm just going to go back real quick. Right now, when you have your TP up, none of this would have happened if you had backed and TP'd in. You'd be full health when you went on this Thoth. You know? You could have TP'd into a ward if, even if you needed to. So, this uh, situation that you're in now where they chase you out, did you end up dying? You go through the tower. This pathing isn't bad, I feel like. Um, uh, unfortunate. You heard him mark you. You don't want to use your three right when he marks you because you know he's going to stun right away. Just let him use it and then maybe he wastes it and then you can maybe get out. But either way, it's like just a small, small thing. They did use Chalky Mojo ult on you? Okay. You guys end up killing the Huyi for it, but... JB Valor, thanks to the Twitch Prime 7, man. Welcome to the Fonzo family. Much appreciated, bro. Yeah, there is always something you can do about do better. That is true. So you have your TP upgraded, which I like. You're gonna be able to get to this gold fury right away. What you could do is say like attack, like place a word for teleport, like let your team know through VGS that you're coming. And they can bait a fight really well if they know what they're doing. This is plat, so maybe they're they're able to do it. I have no idea. I'm not really knowledgeable on that manner, but um, if they are able to set up a uh, good fight for you at the gold fear, you can TP in behind them, just like the old days of like season two and three in solo, and you can just pound people. You are level 20. Um, you're ejected in this fight. Again, it's should be go on their carries. That's the that's the main job of a solo laner most of the time, unless you're playing specific characters that are good for peeling or sticking around their team. And obviously, as a Wukong from ahead, you should be making it very, very hard for this Thoth, who's also ahead to um free cast you know you don't want to let him do that um it's fine for you to hit the gold fury maybe you could look for a potential zone right now just because it's so low you're not really contributing a whole lot to the secure right now besides maybe like if you actually wanted to try and secure it but if you had just gone and look for a zone here you would have been able to keep this emoji out she doesn't seal it thankfully but like, like you know that's something you should look for and that she had the opportunity to possibly get it so Maybe just be on the... That is your job around objectives. Keep that in mind. As a frontliner, you want to be zoning. So always be on the lookout for that. Really early ult here. So first of all, if you're going to go blink, it's similar to like Zhang. When people play Zhang, they do the same thing. If you're going to go blink, make sure you're out of combat so you can blink onto somebody, right? So if you blink onto... Like, don't hit this chalk. Just stop hitting this chalk. That's not our job. Our job isn't to hit this full health chalk, right? Our job is to get on the Thoth or the Huyi. This... In fact, this Thoth is really free charging his ult right now. He's going to be able to get it off just because we haven't, like, we haven't pressured him all this fight. Stay out of combat. Find out where the Thoth or the Huyi is. Blink on them. If the Thoth dashes away, well, guess what? It's kind of like the last game that we talked about with uh, Set and everything and holding your escape till somebody uses their escape so you can chase after them. If you blink on the Thoth and he dashes away, you have a tiger for him. You have an ult for him. You have ways to chase him down, and you're going to force his actives at least, if not kill him, but... It ended up being a good fight because your your Geb just got a fucking massive ult. But, uh, you know, it, it could have been your fight to to carry. I mean, you're doing fine other than, you know, the start of it. Doing everything fine here. Get your blink off. Frog, have you used your blink? You used it once, I think. Mm, a little bit unfortunate that Tana almost took him out of the tiger. But yeah, I mean, the whole point of blink is to initiate, right? That's kind of like the whole point of a blink as a soul laner. And as a jungler, and even as a, as a support, really. You can use it for other things, but whenever it comes to a team fight, uh, the beauty of Blink is you blink on a carry, they use their actual escape to try and get away, but guess what? You didn't even use your like movement ability. Like, I didn't use my Tiger on you. You just had to escape because I blinked, slowed you with my two, you know? My Wukong two, and then that just like opens up our opportunities. And since you're a tank with uh, defense items, the margin of error is really big. So, like, you can maybe make like a mistake, one or two. Oh, am I? Good, Barricade. I'm good. I'm happy. Uh, but you guys are starting to win the game now. Um, I mean, you've done your job, and like I said, you played pretty pretty well for the most part. Just those little things. I think you could have made better use of your blink. A little bit better wave management. A little bit more um, cognizant of your power spikes that you could have, that you could abuse. You know? And I think you would have been probably even more ahead and more annoying. Stone of Gaia last item. Let's go, dude. That's kind of pog. You'll be really tanky with this. Or maybe not really tanky, but really really hard to kill. You'd be really slippery and you have a ton of sustain. But 
You have a ton of health built. 3,300 almost. 32. Um, you can get away with this. You will have a little bit of sustain. Chalice plus Stone of Guy will get you back up there. You are not near your team right now. Get over there, Frog. If your team's playing super aggro like that, just make sure you're keeping an eye on the map so you know when you're, they're doing that so you can be with them. <clears throat> you can maybe kill this uh, Hu Yi. Uh, <laughs> you should probably a bit recognize that he probably got his back off at that point. Maybe turn the corner and looked and then maybe use your blink, but... Hey, I'd rather you use your blink than not use it, to be honest. Get that thing on cooldown. Look for opportunities with it, you know? I'd honestly... That's, that comes with confidence as well, which we talk about a lot, but it also just comes with, like, you know, just try stuff out. Like, get, get the hell in there. You'll learn from your mistakes if you make a mistake. Definitely could have, uh, you could have Tiger possibly here, but if you don't even want a Tiger just because they maybe can CC it with something, like a slow, and maybe you don't hit it, just ox through all these guys. You don't need a bird. I think it was an accident either way, but just ox through those fools. Right here, I'd probably ox as well. Probably ox there just because, uh, you know, obviously it has slow immunity, in, but also, you know, it's possible that you get a little bit of extra damage off on it. It's good that you're going on the Hui. Uh, only thing, I'm not saying it's definitely better that you, to do this, but you should also be looking for their thoughts because he was, uh, I think, the person who got a really big lead this game. And it's usually the cell leader's job to kind of cancel out the damage character that has a big lead, you know? But you killed Hu Yi either way, and he's level 20, and he's going to be doing a lot of work as well, so it's good. Like I said, not saying it was better, but just something to keep in mind. And uh, that should be game. CG. All right. Some. Uh, you know, what do we what do we learn from that game? Mainly, um, mainly, uh, get that blink on cooldown first and foremost. A little bit of wave management. The micro play I think was overall pretty good, as apart from using the the tiger in a little bit of weird spots. I would say max your three after you max your two. You don't need to put points in your ult. I'd rather have those abilities maxed. Um, and I think the most important probably from that game is that uh. Soccer highlight next. Yeah, what are we watching? Um, this looks like Christian Bale. Movie? Uh, most important thing we can learn from that game is Power Spikes. What is this first video? An epic, awesome Jake Foreman on. No, no, no. We're not watching that. Um, yeah, Power Spikes. Just make sure that you use your Power Spikes and whatever, like you have gold for him and you have your TP up to actually, you know, TP back in with it and abuse that. All right, we're going to watch this, then we'll save the best for last. We'll, we'll save Slade's Thor gameplay for last, since that's the highest level we'll have. All right, so this is Barricat with the Maida's Blessing Ares gameplay, which is interesting, okay? First and foremost, what do you guys think is... Do you think Maida's Blessing is good on Ares? Let me get your guys' opinion, then I'll give you mine. Do you think that if you were going to play Ares solo, do you think Maida's Blessing is the start? Depends on the matchup. A lot of no's, some yeses. This is spicy. Oh, it's definitely spicy. Yeah, I think uh, it is spicy, and it it can it can be kind of fun, and it can kind of do work. But the reason I wouldn't go it is your you have two abilities that proc mage's blessing, right? Like your one hey, and your remember three. Remember when DM Brandon? Oh wait, we don't remember terrible people. I love you. Fine. Nick won a donut. Thanks for the five months at Twitch Prime, bro. Welcome back to the Father family. Appreciate it very much and the interesting message there. But you only have two abilities that proc it. Your one doesn't re reproc it. It only procs it once. And when you play Ares solo, what you're doing is you're chaining the enemy solo laner so you can get multiple hits of your chain so you can use it on the wave plus him, right? That's the whole point. And if you're doing that, you're going to be tanking minions. And if you have Mage's Blessing and you're doing that, then you are going to get poked a ton. You're going to take so much damage. And if the enemy soul ender sees that you have Mage Blessing and, and uh, you're tanking minions, they're going to hit you and they're probably going to kill you. So I would say that Mage's Blessing is probably not the start on Ares for the most part. Um, Warrior's Blessing is good. You could also maybe go like uh, like a tier 2 of like Mystical or something and then Rush Mystical. You get some power from that and then TP in with it if you do that. Obviously, you didn't buy TP this game. But if the enemy soul ender recognizes that you have a Mage Blessing and you tank these minions, I'm pretty sure you should die on like the second or third wave. Or get poked really hard. 
I guess if you are going to play Mage's Blessing, the way to do it is to just not hit him. <laughs> you just clear the wave. So that works. Your, your, your wave clear is actually pretty sick because of the 30 power you get from Mage's Blessing, which is nasty. Also, I really like this as well. Since you did go Mage's Blessing and Tier 1 Boots, going uh, 3 of each pot's really nice because if you do end up tanking minions, having those double pots going is going to make it so you don't just get one shot by him, or at least you sustain the poke from it. If you had gone Chalice plus Boots 1, then you'd be in a pretty rough spot. But you could also just not gone Boots and gone Chalice plus multi-pots, you know? Um, but, I mean, so far, I mean, with the fact that you have Mage's Blessing, this is sick. I actually could chain... Yeah, you could chain him here. Pop some pots. Oh, no double chain him. Put a point into your chain. Oh, no! Don't get your Ares 2 until probably, like, level 7 or 8. Or maybe even... You don't even have to get it then. You can get it at level uh, 6 for the auto attack cancel combo, but... I would have put double points in my chain and then hit him with it. Because right there, you were out clearing him pretty well, and you were going to, just like a small micro thing, you were going to clear the melees with your chains here if you just double chained him really fast. Like, boom, and then double chained again. Then the archer, or the melees are done. And then you have pots to sustain the archer damage. And then you would have poked him really hard. So that would have helped you uh, own in this lane a little bit more. Again, I don't I don't know if this shock is really playing it all that well. I feel like if he has Warrior's Blessing, he should probably just be hitting you. But... Not gonna lie, it's bothering me. Wait, what? Oh, where's the three key? I don't know. It's his mouse thumbnail. I think that's a mouse button. You know what's funny is that th with the fact that you have Mage's Blessing, <laughs> you're playing the lane like really, really well. Like, considering that you have that, right? Those archers aren't dead, but you're not really gonna take much damage from them, so you're fine. So far, so good. I like it. <clears throat> Only thing is, I don't think you should have a point in your two, but no big deal. Looking at the enemy team comp, there's another Mercury, so Gowie's got to keep in mind of those lane ganks. Obviously, you can't do it right now because he's level two. You could put two points in your chains right now, and since you're already out clearing, oh no, you put a point in your three. Don't tell me you max your three. Don't max your three, Bearcat. Don't max the three. Oh no, dude. Wait, do you actually do you actually end up maxing it all the way? It's not the end of the world, but do you know how much damage you get from maxing your chains? Like how much the damage goes up? Because I don't. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I do, but I don't. You know what I mean? It's a lot. Let's just look at it real quick. Let's look at the numbers. My goodness, it's thundering out. Okay, god damage per tick. And how many times does it tick? Uh, does it not say? Oh, okay, so it can deal up to 525 damage per shackle, right? 525 damage per shackle. So from maxing it, you can get an extra 1500 damage. Okay? <clears throat> we won't talk about it, but it's okay. I mean, the whole point of going Aerie Solo is to, like, out-trade people with your chains. Just, like, one-shot them, you know? Especially characters that rely on movement abilities. Fuck really doesn't all that much, but it's whatever. Yeah, yeah, but your 3 is already going to be decent for clearing the wave. Your 3 isn't really going to... Like, the damage you get from maxing it doesn't really, like, amount to all that much when it comes to clear. Especially on camps and stuff. Like, your 3 at rank 1 does a lot of damage to camps because the percent health damage that it does works on camps. Now. It used to not work. I like what you're doing here. Looking for this. I probably would have looked for this from the get-go. So, you see the chalk is pretty poked out. Maybe you walk into the totem here, but then you walk towards their blue buff just to see what's going on, you know? Check things out. You do end up walking towards it just because you have a lot of pressure and the chalk got poked out, I think, by minions. But... Um, poking out this this uh, Mercury is really good. If you had two points in your chains here, this guy actually might be dead with your ult. Didn't really need to take a tower shot there. You did get Merc beads. Best thing you can do whenever you're playing a character that consistently gets beads is to call it out, which you did. And an even better thing you can do is get a timer on the beads for your teammates. And the easiest way to do that, he beads at what? Four, ten? He beads at four minutes and ten seconds. Add three minutes to the time that he beads. So seven, ten, and then minus twenty seconds. So 650, right? Yeah, so 650 Merc Beads. Easiest way to do it. 
You don't even really have to think about it. Add three minutes minus 20 seconds. Boom. That's the timer, and one of his beads will be back up. Merc beads in all caps. Again, if you, I think if you had two points in your chains there, you might have died, though. Let's see what boots you go. Go for the purple nurple boots. That's cool. I like it. Get a little chalice, which is good, too, and switch for multi-pots so that we can trade. Beautiful. I like it. You don't need to switch for those multi-pots, but it's cool. If you're going for the trading, then that's good. Math hurts, though. It's, eh, it's not that hard math. It's hard if you think of it like 160 seconds. When you think of it like that, it's a little more difficult to do. But if you just think of it as add uh, 3 minutes minus 20 seconds, then it's fine. You're actually pretty far behind because he has TP and you don't. So he was able to TP in and like you let, you missed an entire wave off of the pressure that you had on the blue buff and the play that you looked for, which is fine. I mean, you got the Mercury beads and it's just like an opportunity cost. And, uh, yeah, I think if you, if you had more points in your chains, this is where the archers are going to hurt, man. You have no defense, and if you, like, try and trade with him and, like, chain him and take this, this archer poke, it's going to hurt real bad. You do have the double pots to go for it, but... See, like, putting points in your three doesn't really all do all that much. You do full clear, but, like, what are you going to do to this guy? You're going to auto him? <laughs> you want to be able to have three chains, you know? And I ain't talking two chains. You want to be able to three chains people, like, through the wave. It's like what we talked about before in every other gameplay and every time I ever have ever talked about it ever. You want to be able to hit them plus the wave. That's the easiest way to win a lane, right? So. And especially on Ares. If you're not chaining them plus the wave, then you're kind of wasting the pick, right? Because you're not getting the, that chain damage off. If you're playing for the team fights, then I guess, you know, more power to you, but. See, like, this, these chains aren't going to hit all that hard. They're going to be pretty pitiful. And your three hits okay, like, decently hard, but it's going to hit, like, decently hard either way. Putting points into it really doesn't do all that much, to be honest. Yeah, if, if next time you play, uh... Oh, okay, you're putting points into your one now. That's good. You hate the flames, you hate them? No, 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 they're actually, it's actually like a fine ability at rank one, that's the thing. The change just gets so much better the more points you put into him, whereas the three really doesn't. And the cool thing about Ares nowadays is that his three is actually pretty good jungle clear as well, that's why he's like viable in jungle, kind of one-shots the camps. Your ally did not make it. <clears throat> but, I mean, all things considered, you're really not playing this lane all that bad. Keep in mind, whenever you're walking to go proxy, how many tower shots you're going to take. So, I think you thought the minions were going to tank here. You can try and make them tank by looking. Make sure you keep eyes on the minions. That's the best thing you do. Look at the minions and see whether or not they're going to run into tower to tank it. Because you need to be uh, weary of how many uh, tower shots you're going to take. Because if you know you're going to take two here and you're going to be at 600 health with no defense, and this shot comes to you, you're dead. Like, you're going to die here. <laughs> Plus, your, your clear is pretty bad as Ares for anyway, right? Luckily, the Merc is in mid. He also kind of scuffed your clear here. This is bad. <laughs> I don't think I have to explain why this is bad. If the chalk comes to you, you're dead. See you later, alligator. Oh, blink out. You could have maybe blinked out. Hey, he's going to ult this and you're dead. All right. The only thing we could have done, given the, the way we played it, is I would have maybe uh, walked I would have walked towards maybe the tower here. So you could have maybe blinked away given that you were just sitting right here, right? And maybe you could have gotten out. He probably would have chased you. But if you walk towards the tower here, the wave is about to be here. You know who actually does this a lot and is pretty good at it? Dragon Story. Dragon Story does this a lot when he's playing Loki. You could walk to the wave right here, or the, the tower on the left. Go this way. If he comes to you and throws out his one, you blink through the tower. If the minions aren't tanking, you're still going to be able to take one or two tower shots. And then you just gun it down the lane, and you actually might be able to get out. So... And it would make it really awkward for him. So, like I said, given the way that you played it, you were pretty much dead to rights there. If the Chalk decided to come to you, and he did. So, um, that was just kind of like a uh, little silly play. I think mainly it's just because you thought that the minions were going to be tanking. You took two, ta two tower shots. Either way, I think you would have died just because you were already pretty low and you had no defense. But maybe the Chalk doesn't decide to go for that because you're, you aren't as low without those tower shots. Blink was on combat cooldown, unfortunately. Oh, yeah, well, not right away. He could have used it. Um, don't do this. 
this is not the type of proxy you want to go for. Whenever the minions are like running past, it's kind of not as as worth it to go for the proxy. Like you can still do it, and this is fine. But your blue buff is up, um, and uh, yeah, I guess it works out. I guess it's actually pretty good. My apologies. Although if he does get your blue buff, it's gonna feel pretty bad. But you are denying their junglers back camps, which is really good. You have a timer around their blue buff. Wait, is your blue buff down? Is that why you're doing this? Okay, if you're doing it because your blue buff is down, then everything you've done is fine. See, this is like your three is maxed basically, and it's not even full clearing the wave. If you just had one point in that and then had points in your. Well, not one point. You'd have a couple points to do it at this point, but. Merc my blue when it died? Okay, then what you. What, everything that you're doing actually makes a lot of sense. You should probably assume this chalk. Okay, no, it's it's uh down. I guess. Should be a kill. Can't get away from you without when he's crippled. Nice, good jukes. I like the little uh, micro play there. Wait for your collie. She stuns to set up your chains, which is good. And the merc dashes out. I'm pretty sure the merc could have killed you. You got too afraid. I think. You actually should count your freaking lucky stars. Just run away from these minions. Don't. What are these minions doing, dude? Minion AI. Omega lol. Um, nah, I probably just would have run away from those minions. Hey, we get a blue buff, though. Wait, that blue buff? You sure that blue buff wasn't up the entire time? Yeah, put that three in instant cast. Agreed. Honestly, just try and learn instant cast for everything, but there's a certain abilities like Aries 3 that you definitely just would want on instant cast. There's no point of uh, not, you know. Uh, mystical mail into a void stone. This is a, I like the build. Other than the mage's blessing, I fucking love the build, honestly. Um, I do think cooldown boots maybe a little bit more preferred on Ares now. When purple boots had pen on him, dude, purple boots were amazing on Ares. They're still fine, but that extra little power and lifesteal that you get really isn't all that much. It's really not that much more worth than cooldown. I would go on him. Go on him. You have mystical mail. Beat his ass. He does have a runic, so he's going to be able to tank a decent amount of it. But if you had all of your chains and get some auto cancels off, which you did, and then three, you should be able to out-trade him pretty hard. Yep. He's about half health. That's just about knowing your damage numbers. Little auto cancels with the two. Um, you know what we could do? You know what would be really cool? Let me do something real quick. I should start doing this when I'm doing coaching. I'm going to open up Smite, and I'm going to show you a combo on Ares that you can run in solo. Um, but yeah, so far, I mean, this is pretty standard tra uh, trading in lane right now. You have a maxed out chain, so you can actually do damage to him. Feels good, man. He does have a runic, though, so something to keep in mind. And at this point, I, I wouldn't mind you just, like, clearing the wave and running around to clear. You do have mystical, so that's going to help your hyper farming potential. Sorry. Sorry, guys. <clears throat> Hey Finny, okay, really enjoying this type of content, hope you do it more often. Do you think the new Spear of the Magus will replace Soul Reaver as a last item in Guardian Solos? Guardian Solo is going to be so yeah, strong. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I agree. I think, I think it, I don't know if it will replace it, but it will definitely be an option along with it. I would have gone on this Merc, okay. This Merc has no defense. If you're proxying, you should be prepared, one, that Merc is going to come over, and two... You should be prepared on like what you're going to do, like the decision you're going to make. Are you going to go on him? If I was you in this position, I would go on him. You could also you could also just try and run away, but you have to like be ready for that, right? If you're just going to sit here and kind of like jerk each other off, then you know not much is going to come from it. Right now, your chains are up. Go on this stupid merc. Go on him. Ooh, unfortunate. You're unable to hit the the chains, which sucks. But he kind of he kind of knew you were looking for him at that point. Um, even if I think if you did chains him. And, and like went on him you would have killed him um but even if you didn't kill him again i talked about in the other game but it, you make people second guess themselves with your confidence and stuff like that you know if you're just super confident in everything that you do like like if you turn like if you 180 chains that guy 
and like you start poking him out he's gonna be like what the hell is going on this guy shouldn't i be killing this guy he just proxied he's an aries like with the mage's blessing like what what's going on here you know and Coaching you're gonna from the solo god you're gonna confuse Dreams people true you're gonna confuse people with their confident with your confidence and you're gonna make them play worse you're gonna make uh them second guess themselves and stuff so <clears throat> dj wayne thanks for two months of twitch prime welcome back to the fonzo family appreciate it very much it doesn't mean you should make dumb plays but that wasn't a dumb play like you have a mystical male purple boots aries with 150 power with a little bit of defense for the merc like you're gonna fucking one shot him dude and it's gonna be hard for him to kill you right away so um what i wanted to do is show you guys the aries combo real quick just so we have it you guys can see it real quick It's mm -hmm. my smite password, exclamation point password. Have you seen this creature? All right, we'll run, we'll run this combo real quick. This is the freaking ultimate DPS combo to really try and one shot somebody. I've been tracking this rare behemoth for days now. I don't need anyone slowing me down. You hear? Okay, let's go. So assuming that you put points into your chains, like a good boy. And we're level six. Okay. Uh, wait, 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 let's do this. Well, first of all, what you can do at level five. At level five, you can do this. Have three points in your one, not have a point in your two. And just have a point in your three in your ult, and that will be a ton of damage because every point that you put into chains is gonna just increase the damage a ton. But once you hit level six, what you can do is you can do this. So who can I pull? Let's pull this guy. So say that you get a guaranteed ult on their soul laner because they don't have CC immunity. You can ult them. Auto chain, auto two, auto chain, auto chain, and then auto into your three. That way you get uh, auto cancels off in between everything and it'll give you like a ton of extra DPS. I'll do it one more time just for fun. It's pretty simple. Basically you're doing what you were doing before. If you have a guaranteed ult on their solo laner, you ult them, bring them to wherever, auto chain, auto two, auto chain, double auto chain, and then auto in tier three. And that will be the most amount of like DPS that you could probably do. Yeah, it's it's pretty simple. Basically, after you ult, just you can uh, you get a guaranteed um. Not going anywhere. <laughs> you can get two autos off on that last one as well. Keep that in mind. Damn, you kind of forcing his ult there. Why did that chalk ult so early? Kind of odd. Top three still for late game carry. Probably like Ama, Nike, uh, and then a Guardian. I don't know which Guardian, but... Terra. You do know chalk's ult is down. I would actually probably just run at him, you know? Do a little wham-bam, thank you ma'am on him. His ult is down, so it's a free ult, and I would try and ult him and then do that combo that I just showed you, and you'd probably get him really low. But I also like proxying. You're playing for those team fights, which I like. I do enjoy a little team fight player. That tower is really low though, so keep that in mind. Like once you know that his ult is down and that maybe you can poke him out, like the the benefit of poking him out would be, or maybe even killing him, is that you would get a tower for it. So you do get like a win from it. Like an actual win for your team and everything, you know? So so if, if you're like just hitting somebody to hit them to stack your player damage, then you know you don't want to do that. You want to try and actually like make an impact across the map. But if there's, an, a, there's a reason for it and there's something you can get out of it, then do it. And the reason would be with tower. He ulted a little bit early, so you get an ult. You guys can probably kill this guy if Cuckoo hits anything. He just hit the one. I guess the, uh, the Chalk does have a lot of magical defense because he's against uh, Mary's in lane and there's a cuckoo on the map and a jing 10 so he probably is stacking magical d yeah. 
You are pretty low mana. I know that you're kind of thirsty for this chalk, but you see Merc. Ooh, this is going to be rough. If you... This is going to be rough either way. This has got to keep eye on the map. Once you get the tower, you should just back up. If you hit that chains, this guy is probably dead, though. So that's a little bit unfortunate. So... Right away, just kind of keep an eye on the map. Once you get this tower, you're going to get this tower either way with your minions, most likely. So I'd probably just start backing up. Your team was on Gold Fury the entire time. So either way, it's a win across the map. You get a tower, you get a Gold Fury. Even if they end up killing you in this Cuckoo, it's still a win. But it might have been avoidable. If you had run towards your tower here and hit your chains on this Merc once he like ganked you towards your tower, it would have been a kill and you probably would have gotten out. No big deal, though. So we do have our Void Stone online. Ooh, I like the build. This is something I go as well. I'm assuming you're going Relic Dagger with Blink Thorns. Relic Dagger combo with Blink Thorns is OP, man. Especially against a Mercury. If you end up getting a Nemean Lion... Ooh, baby. This guy says, can you fucking ward, guys? Jesus Christ, man. Keep it PG. <clears throat> anyway. I guess it was PG because it was asterisked out. It was censored. But you definitely are playing for the team fight as far as the build goes and the uh, the way you're playing on the map. You guys got a gold for you and a tower, but somehow you're tired in gold now. I think it's just from all the kills. Keep in mind that sometimes kills and just farming jungle buffs it are um, is better than um, like doing an early, early gold fury or doing an early like objective, you know? The objective is the free time to farm and getting ahead on the map, especially with neutrals and stuff. Ooh, nice. Good stuff. That was played pretty fine. The only thing I would say is that when you walk into lane, just be patient with your chains. You know the Jington's right here? If you just waited for a CC, you don't always have to assume that he's going to CC for you, but just assume that uh, that it's like possible. So just wait. If he doesn't use a CC for you, then, go, then you can fire out that chain when you're a little bit more patient. Plus, it's likely that if you just walk at this Merlin, he uses his flicker. He panics. Flick, he panic flickers out anyway, right? So, um... Then you can use your chains after and then just DPS him down. But either way, I mean, you guys got the kills. Good stuff. I don't know if his beads that you assumed his beads were down or if he used them right away right there. Let's really see. Good thorns. I, I like the use of that thorns there just to peel for yourself for the, the merc so you don't get too far poked. You don't always have the thorns to get a kill. Like, you can use it to just buy yourself more time or to get yourself out of, like, a sticky situation, you know? Or maybe to make sure you have more health than you would have had if they just kept hitting you, you know? So. This is good though, you guys are kind of running it down. Get some chains on this chalk. Refresh it. Oh, you hit him. You hit those. Nice. Um, maybe a little bit troll just to be sitting behind their tier two right now when you're only 1k ahead and probably not gonna get a kill. This guy's about to get Merc ulted in mid. Oh no. You guys do get the tower for it. Oh, the chains. The flick. The cripple's about to run out. Oh, unfortunately, you weren't able to refresh the chain, so keep in mind that if you only hit one of the chains, the cripple won't last as long. You have to actually refresh that bad boy. Mm, this is a little bit awkward. I don't really like the passing here. I would just run out through mid. You're a gonorrhea. Oops. Keep reducing the volume. After you guys did this all, th this whole thing in mid, um, you could have even run through mid because you had a tower coming, but maybe the Merc would have ulted you. Um, just, just run away here. After you, after you change this guy and he dashes out, I probably wouldn't go left. I would just like turn around and walk the other way or walk up this way. Walk this way. Because if, you, if you're going to try and go on this Jingwei, then blink on her and go for it. Try and really, you know, fucking pull the trigger and go on her. And even if you like, even if they come and rotate, at least maybe you get a kill before they uh, kill you. But don't just like sit here when you know their entire team's up. You know, you gotta be wary of the map. Always keep an eye out on the map. You guys do have uh, two tier twos though. You should be ahead more in gold than you are, honestly. The fact that they're actually pretty close to you in gold says that your team isn't really farming that well and um, that uh, maybe they've gotten some like, mm, like important shutdown kills and stuff. Because you gotta think of towers and like, well, mainly towers. You got to think of towers as like a bank or like a deposit to be taken out on the map, right? And once you take it out, you can never get it back, but it's permanent. Like you get that extra gold. You get that increased gold for your entire team for the rest of the game. And it's like little little pots of gold that you can grab, right? Um, but if you grab all the pots of gold on the map and you're still tied in gold, 
and they have pots of gold still to grab. You know what I mean? Like you got all of your pots of gold for your, your little greedy fingers, but they still have to grab like three or four and they're even in gold. That means that you're in probably in not too good of a spot, you know, because they could get even, uh, they could get ahead if they just grab those little pots of gold. You know what I mean? So yeah, that's how you have to look at the towers as well. Because you can, you can look at it as like map pressure. That's good. It's like, oh, we're winning the game because we have a lot of their towers. But if you have all of their towers and you're like tied in gold, that might be a sign of something bad. What just happened to that gold fury? Somebody stole it? Oh, Merc ulted it. He got it and killed the Izanami. That was a bit weird. I think your job here was to uh, maybe go towards the gold to make sure that it was secured. Because you know that Merc can maybe ult through. You did see Merc right there, though, so it's a little bit unlucky. But to be fair, we didn't really get a whole lot done during this entire gold tree. Obviously, you're running back from base, but you want to be the one zoning. <laughs> little, look at that face that Izanami sent. Feels bad. No, you're right, Valar Magulis. A little bit unfortunate on the, the uh, chains there. But we need to get our actives on cooldown. We are now in the middle of like a... This fight's been going on for like 15 seconds. We have a relic dagger and we still haven't gotten our freaking... Uh, our relics on cooldown, man. Get these relics on cooldown. We need to use these bad boys. So right here, obviously he flickers out. Not much you can do there. I would get out of combat right now. Try and get out of combat right here and then blink on this Merlin. That's what I would do. Try and get my, my thorns going as well. Thorns this guy if I can. Thorns right now. Eh, this is good. Four man ult. I like it. Get your thorns off. That's good. Chain's coming up. We just gotta hit chains. Nice. <gasps> no! No! Barcott, you just chains and you didn't reuse the chains, dude. No, dude. You could have you could have killed two people there, probably. If you had to use your chains on multiple people. Chains, 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 man. Unfortunate. FCU. I play alone all game. <laughs> Dude, this build is freaking poggers. If you go Nemia next item, I'm actually loving it. Uh, we're just clearing our ways. Fire is probably the next objective because Gold Fury is down. But we need to get these blinks on cooldown, man. We need to. We need to use them for something. You did play that fight pretty well, though. You did get the formula. The only problem was the, the chains. Um, Ares late game, actually not as straightforward as other characters. Like, I wouldn't say that he's just like, oh, you want to dive every time. He's actually pretty good at, like, CCing tanks and making it hard for them to get away with his cripple and everything in the slows. He does a lot of damage to them, especially with, like, your void stone. So it's not as straightforward that you should just be diving, but you should at least be forcing actives to help out with your, so your jungler can dive and do stuff like that. Like, you should be trying to blink ult their carries as much as possible, and you should be trying to use your blink, especially when you have a relic dagger, right? Get that on cooldown so you can look for opportunities. And now we're just doing a fire giant dance. Usually whenever there's a fire giant dance and it's really awkward and it's lasting a while, you need to open it up somehow. And one of the best ways to open it up is just push waves. If you push that solo lane uh, wave up, then somebody's going to go there and maybe you can look for a gank for them there. Or maybe while that person is ganking or defending the wave, you can look for a fight around fire. And then you have a power play. Um, you know, there's like a lot of things you can do to open it up, but... Good blink initiation on two car uh, carries. Nice, good ult. Should be able to get a kill on Merc for this. Perfect, you have thorns for this Jingwei if you need to pop it. She does have poison star to keep that in mind. Um, force her ult for free. Oh, and you do hit the Merlin with the chains. Dude, look at this, this is fucking beautiful. You guys win the game off of this, I'm sure. Maybe you don't w end the game here, but that was all you. It's the soul laner's job a lot of the time to initiate. And what did you do with your blink relic dagger? You initiated. Who did you hit? A Mercury and a Jingwei. Their ADC and their jungler. Two very high priority targets. Mercury, I guess, didn't have beads or maybe didn't have his ult or didn't prepare his ult in time or whatever. But he gets pulled, so that's a free kill. You get all of your chains on him, so that's awesome. Um, you start going on the Jingwei. You thorns. With your thorns cooldown, what do you force? You force the Jingwei ult. 100% worth in the middle of a fight. So now you force the Jingwei ult with just your thorns, and you have a Relic Dagger, so that's up in 75 seconds. And then you also hit the Merlin with your chains. I don't know if you meant to do that. I think you were trying to hit the Jingwei, but either way, you hit him. And now this guy's dead as well. And you single-handedly, I think, carried this entire team fight. so 
Not much I can complain about there, honestly. And I flick back. All right. Hell yeah, then. And then should win the game from there, to be honest. You guys get Fire Giant. Only thing I would say during Fire Giant is doesn't apply here because everybody's dead, but just know your role when the Fire Giant's being pulled. As a Soul Laner, it's to zone a lot of the time. Unless you're playing certain characters, sometimes you have to be the one tanking. If your support is too low, then you should be the one tanking it the entire time. And then your support can maybe look to zone, or somebody else can look to zone. But you kind of got to know your role the entire time. And uh, when everybody's dead, you don't really have a role besides to tank it well, you know. Which, you know, we get knocked up sometimes. And then last item, we go for a mantle, dude. I like the build. It's pretty. It's a good build. And then as far as the sieging goes, you're only up 6k, so it's possible that it could go poorly, you know. Like, it's, it could be a, a close siege. The best thing you can do to open up a siege is to split push. Like 3b2 three, two is what it's called. When you People will say stuff like 2-3 two, or 2-2-1 two, two, or like 3-2-0 or like 1-1-3, um, one, one, stuff like that. That just means like how many people you want to put in each lane. So what you can do is like have, oh my goodness, dude. There it is, dude. You won your team the last fight and the Shington just won your team this fight. So this game's over. I think you guys just got two good, really, really good initiations. Pretty straightforward. And, uh, don't know, if you, don't know if you need to drop the tower there, but it doesn't really matter. Game's over. I nice should. Oh, and just a small thing. If you have thorns, you should be the one taking the titan because you can thorns the titan damage. Did you see it, how much damage you were doing with your thorns? Let's see. 85, I think it was. 94. So that, that. Titan hit himself for only two hits of uh, your thorns. He hit himself for basically 200 damage. If you uh, if the Titan didn't die as fast, you would have reflected probably like an easy like 400 damage. So just a little bit of extra increased DPS on the Titan. Add that up with your Mystical Mail, your three, all the other DPS that's going on right now. Like that thing's gonna die real fast. But yeah, just be the one taking the Titan whenever you uh, have thorns up, especially if you're high health. And yeah, that was a pretty clean game, honestly, man. I mean. The, oh. I don't really have too much to complain about. Only thing I would say is the freaking the waves, the proxying, a little bit, a little sketchy sometimes. Play a little bit more confident, I would say, with your chains. Be a little bit more patient with your chains as well. I know it's probably like a hard little dynamic there to be confident but be patient. But what I mean by that is like when you're, you should be confident that you can kill somebody or at least try and kill somebody. Um, but that doesn't mean you need to like spam your chains right away. Just know that going into like a situation that you could probably um, kill them and then uh, play it from there. Uh, get those relics on cooldown as fast as possible. Try and be the one initiating. The reason you won that one fire giant fight was because you were the one who initiated and you initiated really well and you got your, your relics on cooldown. You forced a ton of stuff. But just try and do that uh, throughout the game more. And then also whenever you're playing against the Mercury, I would say try and be wary of those lane ganks or just the ganks while you're proxying. Ares, part of the reason a lot of characters like Ares, Kabrakian, all those like really high damage and guardians aren't as viable in solo is because if you proxy or do stuff like that, you're pretty much a sitting duck. Like you're going to get gone on and killed pretty easily. So it's like, why would you play that character when you can play like Vamana, where if you proxy and they come to try and kill you, you will either kill them or buy so much time that it will just be like a, a net win across the map. Or maybe they don't even come to you because they don't even want to try and kill you because you're Vamana with ult, you know, like stuff like that. So it's something that you got to keep in mind. Um, but yeah, this is a this is a cool gameplay. I think you played pretty well. There's, there were some fatty chains in there. And again, max your chains. Don't max your your three on Ares, please. But that that I feel like we've kind of driven that point home. And um, yeah, other than that, I like the build. Good stuff. Mage of Legend, thanks for the Twitch Prime sub, man. Welcome to the Fonzo family. Very much appreciated. All right, and last but not least, we have Slade. Slade on the Thor solo, baby. Reminder, you wanted a game where I played like trash. You didn't have to play like trash, but just something that everybody can learn from. You know, like sometimes when I do these uh, coaching streams, people will send me a gameplay and be like, Ubu Senpai, can you help me learn? I, I feel like I struggled this game. Thanks, thanks a lot. And then it'll, I'll watch the game, and it's like they're playing fucking King Arthur in a casual at 3 a.m. on a Sunday night. And like everybody in the game is high and drunk, just wasted. And they go like 26 and 0, and they F6 in 10 minutes. And I'm like, oh, thanks for sending that gameplay in. I'm sure everybody can learn a lot from this. 
I'm sure I'm sure I'm sure you wanted me to just help you improve your gameplay, not let make me watch a game where you just destroyed some people. You know? Alright, anyway. So keep in mind, for Slade, Slade's like a master's level player, so this is probably the, the best gameplay we have, or at least the highest level gameplay that we have. Clicking tab real quick, I'm gonna pause. So Serial's in this game, who's a high level player, Kirby's a high level player, Chapitome is obviously Panatome who is a high-level player. This guy's name is Washed Out, probably a Smurf, and some other people that I don't really recognize. I think I recognize Cucumber. I think that's a Smurf as well, so... It's probably like a, a Master's Level game, so... Highest level game that we've probably watched. He is playing the Thor solo. Going full screen, Pod Champ. Love to see it. Um... So far, start pretty standard. I'm not gonna okay for this gameplay, guys. I'm not gonna talk so much about like the the obvious things because obviously Slade's a pretty good player. Like, I'm not gonna be like, you know, like it's I I, I doubt like when we're watching this, he's gonna forget to pop a pot or something like that, you know. So we'll try and talk about more like the advanced stuff since we kind of already went over some small stuff. Under ping rip. Ooh, that is that is definitely a rip. Under ping Thor not doesn't feel good. I do like the build though. This is pretty standard. Just uh, chalice, multi pots, warrior's blessing. What's good about this though is that he has a disco passive, dude. Disco passive plus Thor passive. Early game, you are going to one shot. I bet you. Well, if you said you played horrible, maybe you don't get a solo kill, but you definitely. Unless you like just play really scared, you definitely will have the opportunity to get a solo kill. You're so smexy. Thanks for the three months, man. Welcome back to the Fonzo family. Much appreciated, bro. Tabbing Pog. It's about tabbing, guys. It's all about tabbing. You can never tab too much, unless you're making gameplays for YouTube and p it pisses people off. So he's starting his blue, which is obviously good for his jungler. Not really that great for him. Thor's, uh... Thor's level 1 uh, clear isn't too bad. It's pretty easy to get credit for the full wave, though, because you can hammer it and run away. Like, hammer from a distance. It's like, a small thing that you can do when you have a disco passive and you really want to get it is you can look for their soul laner and just start hitting them. So that you can have that disco passive for the first few levels. Because now you don't have it. And if you had stacked your damage a little bit more, you might have had the disco passive. And then maybe you could have just like killed this guy with auto attacks, you know? I mean, so far so good. You know that he's not going to hit two for a couple minions. So you can play up for just a second so you don't get poked. And uh, you're just keeping that disco passive up. It's fine to lose these minions to tower. So keep your health up so that you can win pressure on the next lane. Or the next wave. That's like... Something that I think a lot of people make a mistake of, they they really want to try and get um, credit for the minion wave on like a certain wave when they can just let it die to tower and not take as much poke so that they can get a ton of pressure on the next wave, you know? Because if he had sat there and tanked those minions and um, gotten really poked out on it, then he wouldn't be able to play really aggro on this next wave. But on this wave, now that he has some, some health and stuff and that guy just wasted his cuckoo one, he should be able to play pretty aggro. Like I'd be trying to go on this cuckoo pretty hard, I think. I would just pop my multi-pots, that's the kind of the point, that's why they're really good on Thor, and I would just start hitting this guy, especially with the Disco passive and Thor passive. Get your auto-attack cancels off. This could be a kill. Ooh, yeah, his three came back up. It's good of you, though, uh, Slade. I think maybe just be hitting him from the get-go there. Pop those pots, then you have them for a reason. This could be a kill, though, if we hit the freaking raw double-tap. Got to be careful of the map, though, depending on the, how the Cuckoo plays. Could be getting ganked. He's kind of playing oddly aggressive. Yeah, there's a Achilles here. It is Panatome as well, so keep that in mind whenever you play against him, Slade, that he'll probably, uh, like, level 2, 3 gank you. Um, that's all I have to say about that. Not going to say anything else. Anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, one of the best ways you can tell is, like, if if the way they're playing if they're playing weirdly confident and they're not just like a terrible player, then it's probably likely that somebody else is around, you know? And you can kind of just keep your eye on that. Um bit of unnecessary poke here. I think maybe you could have killed that cuckoo. The Achilles was pretty low mana, you probably could have looked for it, but no big deal. I think uh only mistake you've made so far is maybe not hitting him on that one wave. It's fine though. You you could say that playing really really aggressive like that um, when the jungler is missing is a mistake, but I I I tend to disagree. Like 
If you play back every time the jungler is missing when you have opportunities for kills, it's going to cost you a lot in the long run. And like your TP was up as well, so they killed you, but I mean, you're back in the lane. If the Cuckoo got the kill, it's going to feel pretty bad for you though. Because you were like kind of winning the lane and then all of a sudden he has a kill on you. Pop those pots. Pop your chalice. Grab another totem proc if you want. You do have the disco passive again. You should one shot this guy. Did you see the Achilles there or something? No, no, Achilles is mid. I thought I saw him there for a second. Nice. Good spacing on your, uh, good spacing there as far as that goes. You don't have to put a point in your ult here. It's probably fine too, but I bet you you don't even end up using it for the most part. Ooh, just a little bit poor spacing there. Just make sure that... One of the highest level things you can do is, based off sound cues, know how far away you are from somebody. I think a lot of people do it naturally once they get to a certain level, but nobody really talks about it. Like, if you're not facing a cuckoo, like, if I'm not facing a cuckoo and I'm playing this matchup, and I hear him use his root behind me, based on how it sounds, I can actually kind of tell whether it's going to hit me or not. You guys know what I mean? That just comes with a lot of experience and everything like that. This guy's rage is pretty low. You should try and poke this guy out. You should fight this guy, Slade. Don't be afraid to fight him. I'd just be autoing him. You still have that disco passive again, so... And the be it's better to fight him at the totem there, because now if you fight him in this wave, he can just ult the wave plus you, and he gets a lot of value out of his ult, right? Because he'll stack up his rage pretty quickly, and you just don't want that. If you fought him at that totem, at max he hits two people with it, right? He doesn't get as much value, and you actually poke him out pretty hard, so... I mean, you do have tier 2 boots, but you should still play pretty confident, I think, when you have a disco passive either way. It also depends on what his build is. I don't really know what his build is. Pulling this kind of, uh... Pulling this kind of, like, blindly like this is a little bit sketchy. Um, but sometimes that's what you have to do. Sometimes that's what you have to do, just so you can burst it down in time. I would have waited a couple more seconds and then hammered, just so you made sure that the Cuckoo wouldn't stop his back to go on you. Um, but yeah, definitely take your back out. You are way too low. And grab a tier 1 breastplate, I would assume. Yep. <clears throat> Jeez. Oh, there you go. Click tab. Let me... Oh. Yeah, the more you click tab, the better, honestly, in my opinion. Always be looking at the power spikes. We do notice that he has his words blessing stacked. One. He also has glad shield first time. So... In general, that would that would lead you to assume that he would out-trade you pretty hard. And he probably would, but you do have a Disco Pass, so keep that in mind. And Thor is kind of kind of a... What's the word? <clears throat> Sup not surprising, but um, sneaky with how much he can like trade with people. If you get a few double taps off that actually hit them, especially with like you having a Disco Passive in full boots, like they're going to get poked pretty hard. And if you do that from a distance where they can't hit you and proc their Glad Shield, like you're going to out-trade them pretty hard as well, so... Nice use of your three to immune the knockup. Gotta be a little bit careful here. Ooh. Small thing, but you made it really, really obvious that you wanted to hammer through him towards the tower. Look at this. He's already walking towards the tower because he's like, oh, I'm just going to chase this guy out and maybe potentially get a kill. He turns around last second, which I thought was a little bit weird, but you made it super obvious that's what you were trying to do. Just try and be a little bit more mind gamey. It's good that you immune his knockup with your three, but... Like, you turned around and walked towards the minions and then hammered over. If you had just kept walking towards your tower and then hammered away, there's no way he would ever have been in position to actually hit you with the root. So. And now, ooh. You could have spaced for the, the ult there. Just a small thing. If you just turned around and back uh, and walked away, I don't think that would have hit you. And every ability that you can avoid is obviously really important, but it's even more important on this patch with Glad Shield because the less procs that they get, the better. Keep in mind that his ult is down now, though, so if you get, like, some poke on him, get a double tap off, uh, perhaps, then maybe you can, uh, maybe you can start out trading him. But I put a point in my wall here. <clears throat> poke him. Oh, no, poke him! You're not going to be able to stay for your full breastplate anyway, so I would just poke him a little bit back get my tier 2 breastplate and tp back in that's really what you want to do with tp is you want to use it as like a second life a lot of the time so that you can win a lane that's kind of the point right um so i would have poked him there run back into my tower tp back in and then maybe he would be pretty poked and i could have come back and maybe out trade him kind of hard uh small thing just so you like can save yourself some time i would have just like hugged the wall there i didn't need to hammer it you know and then i would have hammered the wave and then ran over to blue because now you're, it's a bit of a waste of time here that you didn't, you didn't really... Junglers don't really need help clearing buffs most of the time, you know? 
Maybe you're trying to tag it, but it was like dead either way, you know. <clears throat> So I like point saving on Thor. If you're not comfortable on Thor solo, you can put a point into your wall uh, a lot earlier on. But a lot of times I'll just put points into my 1 my 3 because I'm pretty confident hitting my double tap raw. But once you do end up having a point in your wall, use it to your advantage. Make sure you secure your double. The point of Thor solo is that your your double tap poke is ridiculous. Like you'll literally just one shot Love people. this content so much. Great info. So once you have it with this disco passive, you should start using it right away. Because the way you'll win a lane is by poking them out and then killing them because they're like surprised by all the poke that they took or by like the range that you have on him, right? Abyss Keeper, thanks for the three months of Twitch Prime. Welcome back to the Fonzo family. I appreciate it very much, very much, dude. Like going, oh my god, come on. This is this is what we love as Torcello. See, this is something that maybe a lower level player wouldn't do, especially if they weren't doing too well in a lane. Um, but proxying like especially as thor dude if somebody comes to pro to kill you as thor when you're proxying you just alt out right of course they force your ult and that's a lot um like it's a lot worse than it was last patch because they actually nerfed the cooldown on the ult so it's a longer cooldown but either way like a jungler doesn't want to come to you just to force an ult plus you can bait them really hard like you don't have to ult right away if you hammer away and then they use their escape to try and chase you and then you buy yourself a little bit of time and then you ult and their solo comes to you like you're just buying a lot of time across the map you know so it's similar to like proxying as Vamana. Nobody really wants to gank a Vamana when he's doing that. Um, but now you got two proxies off. You're not. I mean, I wouldn't say you want to necessarily avoid this lane just because you have a disco passive. But if you didn't have a disco passive, it's definitely in a, a lane you would want to avoid. Like Cuckoo's going to out trade you pretty hard. So you are able to get some free farm, be able to farm it to your breastplate. Only issue is that you're going to be about 10 seconds out on your blue. And if he was ready for it, whether he had the timer or not, then um, it would be gone. And he was ready for it, so you weren't able to get your blue buff. Not the end of the world, especially since their blue is up. I think what you're going to do is you're going to recognize their blue is up and go into the air. Yep. Um, you don't one-shot it, so I would have landed on him. You know your team is coming over. He kind of DPS the buff for you, which helped you out. But I would have landed on him there, because you could have gotten a lot of damage off before your team got there, you know? Because, look, the Cuckoo barely gets out, right? If you had landed on him and full comboed him... He'd probably be like half health, maybe a little bit less than half health. And then your team would be there and you definitely would have gotten a kill. Just a small thing, because the only reason you got that blue buff is because he kind of DPSed it for you, you know? But at least you're able to get a blue, trade blues for blue, so not the end of the world. Good that you kept your confidence up even though you got your blue and you went for his. Some people would, you know, mope around after seeing their blue buff taken and go, Wah! and just run under their tower and sit there and be like, my jungler is not doing anything. But, I mean, the only reason your blue buff was, was gone was because of your own decisions. Um, and because that you kind of stayed confident and got their blue, which is good. Definitely should be able to kill this guy. Ooh. Keep in mind, he was already DR'd from your last stun. So remember whenever you're playing Thor and you're doing back-to-back, -back, uh, wall hammers, that you're gonna have to maneuver the hammer so it hits. Because he, he's always gonna go to the side to avoid the hammer, right? Like, he's gonna go to the right here. The minions are in the way. So it's a little bit awkward, but if you just stepped in front of these minions here and went to the right, you would have hit if you TP to it. Ideally, in an ideal world with perfect mechanics, you hit the double tap and then you TP to it, auto him, and he dies. But, um, yeah. So just keep that in mind. When they're DR, you're going to have to maybe maneuver it a little bit. Spacing for the ult. You could have easily spaced for that ult there. I think you end up killing this guy, or at least you should. But if you had just backstepped this just a little bit more or turned around and walked away from it, then you would have avoided his ult. He wouldn't have gotten a glad shield proc. Probably kill this guy. Oh, no. Unfortunate. No big deal. The R lasts, I think, 15 seconds. Diminishing returns. It's either 10 seconds or 15 seconds. So you got a wall pre- or a, uh... Nice. I like that you saved your wall toward until he used his escape. Same logic as every other gameplay we watched today. You want to save your, um, the tools that you have to follow somebody after they run away. You want to save those until they use them. You want to force their escape and then use the tool that you have to chase them to follow them. You can out trade this guy. This guy's a, a maniac. This is a nice try. You can still out trade this guy. See that guy. He, the only reason that that guy out traded you is because he's playing a little bit more confident than you. I would have just been. From the get-go, right when this guy walked into my lane, this fucking mad lad, 
the psychopath. Right when he walks in and I'm full health, I have breastplate, I'm a level over him, and there's no way he's gonna outtrade me when I have a disco passive and defense. Wait, I don't have a disco passive, but either way, like right when this psychopath walks into my lane, I just start autoing him and then three him. You did as well, but only problem is he had his dashes up to avoid your double tap, so I would have tried to uh, secure the double tap a little bit better by using after his dashes, but but yeah, that guy was a psychopath for contesting the wave clear there. Should have definitely punched him a little bit harder for it. If this guy gets your blue buff... Oh no, Slade! See, this is, this is the stuff we can't let these junglers get away with, man. This guy walked into your lane. No idea how to play the lane, first of all. He's obviously going to get one shot by you and get out traded. Um, you poke him out decently hard. I probably still would auto-attack this guy, like right here. I probably would have, when he walked up to me and auto-attacked me again, I would have auto-attacked him two more times, then use my three, and then I probably, he'd be really, really low. You don't have the timer on the blue buff just because you didn't really keep a mental note of it, I guess. Because he got it. You should know that it's a little bit before their blue buff, see, since you went to their blue buff right after. So you should know it's spawning pretty soon. So keep that in mind when you're clearing this wave. It is up. You see the blue buff spawns right now. I'd be immediately in the air. I'd go in the air right now because you know that Achilles might be looking for it. And at the end of the world, or at the end of the, <laughs> at the end of the world, at the end of the day, even if he's not on it, you can just land on it and instant kill it and then get back to lane. You know, like you don't need to use your ult for like, you know, everything. So if you had a uh, either warded it, kept a mental note of it based on their timer because you did their blue right after they got yours. Or literally kept the exact timer by writing down two minutes, like when they stole your blue. All of the above could have worked, right? And uh, you could have just went into the air. Probably have killed Achilles. I think Achilles has blink. Most of the time, Achilles will go blink instead of beads, or most junglers will go blink instead of beads, right? So if he had blink on your blue buff and you had been in the air without him knowing, you would have secured the blue buff and probably have killed him. And then that went from you kind of getting bullied in a matchup you shouldn't have, or in a scenario that you shouldn't have, to you getting a kill, getting the blue buff, and kill, um, and just like being in like a pretty good spot, you know. You ended up getting that blue buff, so that's good. But you had to use your ult to get away. So just some small things that could have turned the, the tides in your favor, you know. But you, you should definitely uh, try and keep timers on buffs. Wards are really good for that because they can kind of make keep the timers for you, but. There's some natural timers that you can use. Like if their blue buff is the same timer as yours, or at least a rough timer, then you can use your own timer to keep track of it. Um, like on the map is what I mean. Like if you don't know when their blue buff is up, but they're clearing it around the same time as you, then you can just use the pie chart on your map to kind of get a rough guess, guess of theirs. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, always be looking at the map. Maybe, I don't think you notice right away that the blue buff literally, like, because you can see when a, a buff spawns. Like, you see it appear. Like, if it's not there and then you see it appear. If you had been looking at your map just a little bit there, I probably would have been autoing that guy the entire time, by the way. You, he definitely would out-trade him when he's under your tower. Nice use of your three to avoid the knockup again. Good of you to also recognize that their, their person is here, that there's not just, like, a 1v1. You're going to lose the tower for doing this play, but I would say it's worth it overall. They see you? Huh. Beads. Oh, oh, unfortunate. Yeah, either way, that play was a little bit weird to look for because you're going to lose the tower. There's a wave coming. In these micro scenarios, you have to assume that they see you in the air because the minions are right there. So you got to say, assume that he's going to juke or do something crazy. He uses his dash instead. Um, and he's able to juke it. So a little bit unfortunate. Hard to actually like guess and go for, but I think if you beads a little bit sooner, you maybe get that kill because you can maybe get a... Uh, You can maybe get an auto cancel off. I don't know if you actually hit that auto. No, you didn't hit the first auto. If you hit the auto cancel into the three, you would have killed him. You would have died either way, but at least you would have gotten the kill. Unfortunate though, and you lost your tower for it. So just a little bit of a bad play to look for. But something to keep in mind that is that if you had from the get go, so when this guy is un under your tower hitting you, you kind of like hit the wave for a second. You don't really hit him. You miss like two autos potentially on him. If you'd have been hitting him from the get-go, he'd be a little bit lower and maybe it would have been a little bit easier to go for that gank. But also keep in mind that this really isn't your fault as well. Like your Mercury's really, really poked. Kind of getting owned. So maybe it's just not worth to go for in general because Merc is never going to be here. And that's something you should probably recognize as well. Because what you could do is just hammer this wave, three it, and then maybe look for the Achilles after. That way you save your tower 
you may maybe also make more opportunity where he doesn't know where you are and you can look for the play like you know it just kind of opens it up a little bit more but yeah just it's hard it's tough tough decisions like that definitely some tough decisions to make there in general the thought process going into this next play is you kind of just missed out on a wave you lost your tower there's a, a lot of farm to be like caught up because cuckoo is going to be a bit ahead of you now if you instantly go look for a better play it better be a pretty guaranteed good play you know so you going straight to mid here is a little bit awkward but i mean i don't i don't i don't hate it oh kill him <gasps> oh no unfortunate could you not have just walled this guy here slade you know he's gonna try and execute or at least try and kill this guy you need to try and peel for him. Either you try and kill him, ideally you like get a raw double tap and you just kill him. That's your, that's your peel. But you could also just wall hammered, and he probably would have died. I think maybe you were afraid of like blocking your merc or something, which I guess is understandable. But it was definitely better than the way you played it, or it would have definitely been better than the way that it ended up being played. Could have maybe instead of threeing there, you could have maybe walled the execute. Hammer, hammer in here and then wall high so he bl gets blocked. I think you thought the three would kill, which is fine. You know, we're just talking... It's just semantics at this point. Really, really uh, small things, you know? Um, but again, like I said, th from the get-go, this not the small thing. The big picture uh, part of that was that you kind of look for a play right after, like, losing a lot, you know what I mean? Which a lot of the time isn't good unless it's like pretty guaranteed that's going to be good. So I think going from that for that play from the get get go could have worked out, but it wasn't as guaranteed as it uh as you would hope. Merc beads and died. So even if you got the kill, it's a one for one, and your jungler loses his beads and dies anyway. You know. Like just because I think people do that as well, like a lot as well. Like once they make one bad play, they kind of get in their head, and then they'll like start looking for plays. They're like, "Oh, I need to get back in this game. I need to do this or that." I mean, sometimes the best thing you can do is just kind of like chill and farm. See, even here, another opportunity cost. Uh, looking for a play in right, and this is lost farm. That's three in a row. That's basically three plays in a row where you're gonna lose a lot of farm. I guess you'll be able to farm this tower and, and defend the tower. So it's really not... This one isn't that bad. This one's probably not that bad. Um, but now your Merc is covering your lane and defending a blue buff. He's going to get out-traded by Cuckoo. This guy's a level 15. Got to be careful. He'll probably out-trade you really hard, which he did, especially since he had the jump on you. He did jump, though. You should be maybe going in the air here. Uh, I guess Cuckoo is there. You saw Cuckoo on the map. Never mind. You're good. Whenever a Sobek plucks, you should, uh, you should wait to beads. You can always beads right when it hits you. Like, you should be able... Or at least you should be able to, ideally. But now this is, like, three situations in a row. Probably about four or five minutes total. Where we haven't really gotten a lot of farm. And we also really haven't, like, done a whole lot. You know? Hundred and fifteen ping on Thor is so rough, though. I feel that. Not too bad, Peel. I like that you went on Achilles here. Whenever you have CC and somebody's tower diving, you obviously want to use CC on them so they can take the tower longer, you get more damage off, but nice use of your ult there. Oh, nice. Good too. I like to use the combo there. I think maybe, did you know Cuckoo's beads were down or were you just going for that either way? But it worked out. You're able to block the subject pluck with it and you guys got a kill off it. Nice. Big stuff. Keep in mind though, something, I mean, that that paid off, but we haven't farmed a solo wave in a, on, in a while. Waves, waves, waves. Even even for a Masters player, chat, like Slade, sometimes we lose track of the waves. No, you can't. Sobex, uh, Sobex pluck is a stun as well. It stuns you and then throws you back. So knockup immunability still get flung by it. It's the same thing with like Herc 1. Herc's 1 is a stun as well as a push. So knockup immunabilities or knockback immunabilities still get hit by it. I mean, all things considered, this is not too bad. Now we're the same level as a Cuckoo, which is good. We're able to get our blue buff. He's probably a little bit ahead of an XP. He'll probably hit level 17 pretty soon off some minions. 
Smite is really farming simulator. Yeah, Conquest is a lot about farming. I would say it's about I would say it's about 60-40. 60% PvE and 6 and 40% PvP. It also depends on what level of smite you're at. Um and like the pressure and like it, there's a lot of factors, right? Like if somebody's playing really high pressure like early game gods, then you have to fight or you'll like or they'll just take everything, right? Oh no. Just be patient. Right here you see the he's in the air. I don't know if you actually can tell though. Oh no, you just Okay, he wasn't in the air yet, but you just saw him go into the air. You saw his jump. Just be a little bit more patient with throw. You don't have to rush your ults. You could have maybe landed on the Huyi there and you would have definitely forced double active at least. This Merc just got a sick ult in. Nice double tap. I maybe would have beads that. And then gone on the uh, Kuku after. Yeah, straight at 3 for 3. They got gold, but... Ooh, you might have been able to kill that so back there. If you walled, double tap 3'd him. I I think mechanically perfectly you would have gotten... You would have killed him. Wait a second. Did you just get a big shutdown gold? Is that what... Oh, yeah, the enemy got gold. Okay. I was about to say, how did you get so much gold? Like, you shut down Cuckoo? Wait, no. You didn't shut down Cuckoo. You shut down Huyi. You got 514 gold for that. Holy, dude. I mean, not not too much to talk about from that. I mean, you rotated to the Gold Fury when you should have. Um, you need to be at that Gold Fury at this point in the game. There's not much for you to do in solo besides push waves anyway. And you could have had a huge impact. You did have a decent impact. You were able to kill you get the shutdown on him, and end up cleaning up Cuckoo as well. Just been a little bit more patient with your ult. I think it would have gone a lot better. Imagine if you had gotten a use out of your ult because you didn't hit anybody. If you got a use out of your ult and Merc got a use out of your, his ult, I think maybe you guys would have gotten a side or something. You know, maybe. Can't really say. It's hard to... I can't call it, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. So, as for, apart from those like uh, those three scenarios where we kind of like went for went for plays and gave up on farming, uh, we're still like you're still tied with the cuckoo. But that kind of that also just kind of says that the cuckoo was maybe not farming as well and um, was looking for some weird plays. You know what I mean? Doesn't exactly mean that like it was worth it. You know the the ends don't always justify the means, and you can't be you can't be results oriented always, especially if you're trying to get better. For anybody that's just trying to improve in general, if you make a weird play that generally wouldn't work, but it does work in that scenario, and maybe even win the game off it. Like maybe it was the payoff was so big that you win the game off of it. That doesn't always mean that like that's something that you can you should consistently do. You know. Yeah, yeah, I do. I do the same sometimes as well, Slade. So sometimes I'll make plays. And I'll be like, ah, I'm just. Why am I even doing this? But I'm just. I'm just speaking from a purely like. At least from what I know, from my own experience and like, um, like my knowledge of the game and everything like that. Uh, like as objective as I can be, how to just improve on every little thing, you know. Falling out the so back there. I think he blinked over it though. This is fine to peel for your Fafnir. You actually will get a lot of damage off. I mean, Thor ult does a lot of damage with the Chain Lightning, but I'd maybe wall double tap this Achilles here. Your Merc is here now. Kind of weird to hammer out once the Merc gets there, you know? Just kind of keep your eye on the map. But I guess you're kind of losing the fight either way because Disco had, uh, I think Disco, was it? Keep your eye on the map here. Your team is pulling the Pyro. I, I mean, I obviously I would want you to proxy here most of the time. And maybe your team should just wait a little bit longer. But your team is pulling Pyro when you know the Cuckoo is going to be under. So you should probably be there. He stole it and he kills the Disco as well, I'm pretty sure. <clears throat> he also messed up the hammer. That's a small thing, no big deal. But yeah, they end up killing Disco because you weren't there right away. Maybe you could have saved her. Maybe you guys could have secured Pyro if you were there. And maybe you guys don't fight all this. Like, <clears throat> A lot of times people make mistake after... Like, People will follow up a mistake with another mistake instead of like like nobody's going to objectively in the moment be like okay that was a mistake i'm not going to play off of that i'm not going to play like um what's the word what am i trying to say here people don't really respond accordingly a lot of the time you know like they don't say oh that was a mistake everybody back out now like let's not fight because somebody made a pretty big mistake they say okay well let's fight let's like let's get in there even though there was a big mistake and it's going to cost us this fight you know what i mean so like 
you kind of you kind of have to um, treat every situation objectively and try to make the uh, objective decision every time. And, like try not to make follow up a mistake with another mistake with another mistake. You know. Don't think you need to be there. His animation time is pretty long. Once you hear him use it, what the fuck is this guy doing? Once you hear him use it, uh, you can just teleport again. I guess you are in high ping, so maybe you can't. Maybe it's gonna be hard to do that, but. Thanks, son, bro. Appreciate it, bro. Bro, son, bro. <clears throat> yeah, so I think the reason that fight went all bad is because you were proxying while they pulled Pyro. Ideally, they either don't pull Pyro until you get there, or you go there right away and just don't proxy. But, yeah. Just wait for this, the safe play. Yeah. It's, uh... Definitely, it definitely feels bad to play Thorin 120 ping, man. Definitely rough. I mean, any, I mean, some characters are worse on higher ping than others, obviously. I think Thor is probably one of the worst characters to play on um, high ping. There's some characters that, who cares if you're playing on high ping? They're still really easy to play, like Baka. King Baka is brain dead. You are going to get a left tower off of this, which is good. I like that you're getting some, some farm and you're able to get a tower off it and an objective. This is a 5v4. You call gank, which is really good, knowing that this will be a good fight for you guys. Even though they have fire, it's a 5v4. You should be able to win this. This guy's beads is... Oh, wait, no. All right, his beads weren't down. In general, if you don't know somebody's beads uh, timer, like if you don't know whether they're up or down, I wouldn't full combo them. Like, I wouldn't do the full Thor combo. Just assume that their beads are up, and you're just going to force their beads with the ult into a 3, you know, and then save your wall hammer for afterwards or something, you know. Whenever somebody's beats are definitely down, though, I would obviously run the full combo a lot of the time. Unless you're in the middle of everybody and you'll get one shot for it, you know? This Cuckoo's actually kind of doing work this team fight. I think that in general, this team fight's just going poorly, maybe because your team's not playing it well. But I think individually, you could have not full comboed and it would have helped a little bit. It wouldn't have done all that much, but. Did a nice hammer. Oh, what a fucking wall. That was a sick wall. Their beads are still down, I guess, so he is dead as well. You're getting fire off of a lot of them, so even though the fight's going like back and forth, you, these kills are a lot more worth for you guys because you're behind and because they have fire, so you're getting it off of them. That was a really good wall, though. I like the way you... If you guys see how Slade maneuvered here, see how he like goes to the side here for a sec? To try and get like that wall. That's what you always got to be doing with uh, Thor, the geometry, you know, simple geometry. See, he walks up to the Sobek, but instead of sitting there and walking him, he also got knocked up. But he went to the side here to the right. See? Just a small thing, but he goes to the right here. So he's able to get both of these guys with the wall on the left side of it. So he can, everybody can like still be on that side, you know? They don't get split up at all, you know? Like there's not one on one side and one on the other. And it's possible that he could have like walled them into the tower. Like they wouldn't have been able to get out if he was able to get a little bit more, um, a little bit more of an angle on it, you know? But pretty good fight for you guys, all things considered. They have fire, you got it off of them, and, they're be and you're behind. You guys kill Achilles now. Cuckoo just got a double ult. Okay. You're really kind of lucky. I mean, I wouldn't say lucky. It kind of just depends on the player. And I'd say it's fine to ult like that most of the time. But um, he knows you're in the air, right? And most of the time when somebody knows... When somebody knows... When somebody knows Thor's in the air, they will always try and like backstep it or they'll always try to like juke to the side. They won't just walk in a straight line. Sometimes they will. I would say probably like 70% of the time they won't. But sometimes they will. But you probably already know that slate. I'm just saying that to other people maybe in chat. That guy just got a sick cuckoo off off though. I think he, you knew his three was up there so I would probably would have saved my wall. You do have full CDR though, so maybe you can wall this guy. Ooh, nice try. Always be looking at the where you are and like where they are for like trying to get a huge wall. Oh my baby, this should be a pretty good fight. Oh, shell absorb. Nice job hammering out after stunning. No way you're gonna be able to chase that out. What are you doing, you troll? Okay, I actually kind of like what you're looking for here. Maybe you could just get out though. Keep running. You should be good. They're just going to be getting Oni Fury. No, no, no. What are you doing? Get out of here. Say, what are you doing? I would have cleared that. 
Okay. Okay, this is bad. This is bad, Slade. You don't need to make the hero play here. You just give him the gold fury and play it safe. You get farm that right wave. It was a pretty big wave, and then you just chill back, and maybe you can actually like contest the next fire and stuff. Oh, what a play from Mercury! At least you guys were able to kill Achilles there. Somehow you're able to get out of this fucking bonanza. But the ends don't justify the means. Let me tell you. Okay. I like the build. This is exactly the build I go. A little Heart Seeker last item. A little one shot potential. This redeems my three maxing. <laughs> <clears throat> Not quite. <laughs> That's right, Bendy. Alright, it'll grow back. We'll get it back. Aki beads. Oh, Achilles. Fire timer. You don't know the timer. So if you guys want to get the fire timer, remember it's just five minutes. So whenever you hear the fire giant go down, and then it says the enemy team has to destroy the fire giant, and you know, blah blah blah. Look at the top of the map. So let's say they did the fire right this second, 2650. Add five minutes to it, 3150 is the next timer or the next uh um respawn on fire. Yeah, yeah, I know you weren't slate. I'm just talking about in general. I know that you probably know it's five minutes, and I know that you would probably do it if you were recognizing it, but just in general, yeah. If you want to, if you just don't know the exact timer and you don't know when the meteor, like you don't see the meteor in the sky or anything like that, or you just want to be prepared for it in, re like, in a good amount of time, then just add five minutes to whenever it's been destroyed, and that's what'll be the timer. Same thing with Gold Fury, five minutes. It's good to look for uh, a lot of poke at the start of a team fight as Thor. So since we're going into like a late game team fight, you're only down 5k. It's really good to look for the uh, the wall double tap poke, especially if your team is rec recognizing it and they're also following up on the poke because you can get a ton of damage off, potentially kill people or force actives. Um, but once you use that ability, you want to make sure you get to the side so that you can use your ult without people knowing. I think you only hit Sobek there. Got to be a little bit careful of this cuckoo damage. He's going to slow you to all hell. But now you're poked a little bit. Ideally, you, you're around your team a little bit more when you look for the poke just because they can kind of single you out after your hammer's down. Once this merc... Yeah, yeah, this is good. I like this. Nice, you hit it as well. Okay, not too bad. Just a micro play there. Obviously, he's going to beads right away after you ult him, so just keep that in mind. Um, You do ult max range right away, which is good. He beads is it. I would just... I wouldn't uh, hammer right... Or I wouldn't wall right away. I would just auto him. Because you're going to proc your Chain Lightning if you just auto. And then I would also just save my hammer and just 3 him. That way you don't have to waste your hammer like that. Because if you auto him, he's probably dead either way. But then if you auto him and then to your 3, he's definitely dead. So you don't even have to use your hammer or your wall, you know? Just a small thing. A lot of people do wall right away on Thor for whatever reason. But it's almost always better... It's almost always better to just uh, use your three, just auto and three. And then whenever they panic, use their actives, panic, use their uh, escape or anything like that, then you can chase them down with everything else. I guess we got to keep repeating this. Because even Slade's doing it. Everyone, save your escape ability. Save your your tool for chasing somebody down until they use their, their escape, until they use their uh, juke or whatever, whatever it is, until they juke themselves to death. Just... Wait, just be patient. You do not have to panic. Use your your only ability to chase people down. You don't have to use it right away. Just save it. Let them use it. They're always going to. I promise you. Dude, fucking everyone will. All right? The best players in the world will. They're going to use their ability to get away, and then you can chase them down. It'll always work. It's never not going to work. And the only scenario where it wouldn't work is where they just sit there and don't use their escape. And guess what happens if they just sit there and don't escape or don't use an active? Guess what happens? What happens if a, if you crack in somebody and they don't use their Aegis? They die. They have to. That's the whole point. So, just be patient. I mean, if they if they just if they just walk away, then something something else is going wrong, you know, like then you're not, you, what I mean is that when you're trying to force somebody to use it, if you walk up and auto somebody and they're getting hit and they're not doing anything about it and you just keep hitting them, they're going to die. But if you just do that and then they panic and then they use their escape, not even if they panic, if they're just rightfully responding to getting gone on, then you can use your escape to chase them and then you'll kill them, you know? So it's like pretty simple stuff, you know?
All right. I mean, everybody does it, and everybody sometimes uses their uh, their abilities poorly. Like I do it a lot as well. I sometimes use my escape when I can save it to chase somebody out. There's characters that I think it's really simple on. Like, um, like I think a Wilkes is pretty straightforward. We talked about it earlier with like the logic of like you're not gonna ult somebody who still has their jump up just because you knocked them up, right? You're gonna wait for their jump, and then you're gonna uh, pull that. You know. It's kind of the same thing with every escape in the game and chasing people down. And it's really important for us solo laners because our job is to chase people down for the most part, you know? Especially their carries, so. <clears throat> but yeah, all there is to it. Unless they break your ankles with a Janus portal. Yep, <laughs> unless they do that, then it doesn't matter what you say it for it or not. It was a waste. Really good poke from your disco. Dude, you have disco Thor. If you're in comms or maybe just like you're, you have some good synergy with each other, you say like set up an ambush here and like group up. And then if you just wall hammer around corners with Disco 2 plus 1, you're going to one shot somebody and it'll win you a late game team fight. This guy's going on you, which is kind of bananas. bananas. Honestly, I bet you you guys win this team fight because of how this Achilles is playing. No troll. The fact that this Achilles is like so worried about you right now. I think you guys are gonna win this team fight because of it. Maybe not because of the initiation on the on her. You get you got insta killed, and also you can't reach them. Nope, you can't reach them. Unfortunate. You weren't able to reach your priority targets, but you guys did kill Cuckoo pretty quickly. I think maybe you guys can still win this fight. Oh no, boosh beads. Yeah, just a little micro misplay there. If you pre beads that and hammered out, you're probably okay. Well, we ended up not winning the fight because her got insta-killed and you couldn't reach their carries with your ult. And I think you know, but anybody else in chat that doesn't know, his targets there, right there weren't that great, but the only reason he couldn't go... Or the only reason he couldn't get on the targets he wanted to is because they were out of range and they jumped towards mid because the her jumped away from his team. So not really his fault. Yeah, see, he says if he jumped to me. Not only that, but Disco says if he jumped to me, but if also if he jumped towards Slade as well, they could have gotten a bunch of Disco damage off and the Thor ult would have hit. So I don't really think that fight's too much on you, but... I actually think the way you're playing the fight at the beginning, you're kind of distracting the Achilles, which was good, but... This is a long game, isn't it? But yeah, I mean, the way you play late game team fights as Thor is you look for those uh, that poke with your your double tap. It's really, really, really strong. Um, obviously, you go into the air without them knowing, ideally, if you can get off to the side and then ult, and then look for their carries. Um, be patient with it though, because they're going to use their escape. Your jungler might be able to force their escape. Maybe you have to be the one to force their escape, and then you kind of just have to trust that your jungler will... What the? Your jungler will, uh, follow up off of it, which is, like, kind of your job. You guys work together to... I got a big cuckoo, but you guys should be able to kill him. If you guys trade for one for one, it's really not the end of the world. You will trade one for one. Not the end of the world. M Mercury was a pretty big character, but... They do have fire, right? So, getting it off of them one by one is good. Your defense is pretty good. You have Disco Thor poke from range. That's pretty insane. And you have a lot of CC. You guys have a ton of CC. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about. See, this is where you're potent. Don't need to know if you need an ult right away. You kind of want them to keep going under tower here. So maybe a little bit preemptive on the ult, but... Oh, that was a really good double tap. Nice try. You guys end up killing him for it. Problem is they can sustain up with their fire giant here and if you fight outside the the phoenix range and anybody else dies they have potential to like kill the phoenix and the game and stuff so ideally you like sit under the tower a little bit more but you were able to hit your ult so that was pretty good of course the heat actives money goes thanks to twitch prime sub and oh true with the twitch prime welcome to the fonzo family guys can we get some hype in the chat for the boys appreciate it very much guys this on her is popping off with this oboe dude Okay, not much to analyze there. That was your team, not you. <laughs> but to be fair, you uh, you got a good initiation off, and you you did kill. You guys did kill the high priority target, their ADC. Obviously, ADC very very important whenever they're sieging. So if you kill him, it's gonna be hard for them to kill the Phoenix. And because they couldn't kill the Phoenix because he was down while they were diving that Phoenix, they all died because they weren't ever gonna kill the Phoenix. You know what I mean? Like it did so much damage to them. So. Yeah, yeah, 100%. I, I was saying, trading one for one is always worth when they have fire, no matter what character it is. So it was it was uh, worth to go for, or it was worth in the end, but what I was saying is that it's possible that like you couldn't have even killed him if he played it better, you know? Let's go back. So you get the nice double tap off. This is good. Good, good start to the fight. 
Get a stun off. He's half health. He gets shelled, right? So he's shelled right now. If you're really confident you're going to hit this ult, then of course, you know, like you're going to, it's going to feel good. But if he aguses this, if he's good and he aguses that instead of beading it, that is all your damage, Aegis, basically. And then you have all these people hitting you. The Cuckoo would have been hitting you the whole time. He wouldn't have been the health that he is right now. He'd be half health instead of that. He could have beads afterward and then stunned you. Obviously, you could have beads it as well, but it, it wouldn't have been as close as it was, right? He Aegis is at the last second. If this is like Panda Cat, if this is like fucking Panda Cat, he, he's going to Aegis that Thoro and be half health. And you're probably going to die and you guys probably aren't going to kill him, you know? So that's what I mean. That's why I'm saying, like, the ends really don't justify the means a lot of the time. Ideally, just play it safe. Get that double tap off, poke, and then don't, like, make it so obvious that you're ulting, you know? When you do want to go for the ult. Yeah, you can maybe beat hammer out. Uh, it's, it, you might be able to do that. Because I guess you could force his beads and then just hammer out, and that might be worth... Yeah, it's, it's just, like, a small thing. It's, it's really just comes down to, like, whether you want to go for that or not. I might, I probably would have gone for that, dude. I probably would have gone for it as well. <laughs> but. Um, yeah, just, just decide whether you want to, like, in those scenarios. A lot of times after I get a double tap, like a nice wall double tap, I always want to go, like, into the air. Like, I just want to immediately go into the air. And I think maybe if you landed on him and then beads hammered out, it would have been good because you would have forced his beads, which is a little bit more important than your beads. By a little bit, I mean a lot more. But but you you also because like that was the first opportunity to go for a wall double tap. You also could have waited for the next opportunity to go for a wall double tap. Maybe he's a little bit lower, and then you can go into the air. Maybe they can't even get the phoenix because you're just like forcing them out with your wall double taps. You know, like if you just keep looking for those, I think maybe a better opportunity will come up. Perhaps maybe not though. Just gotta do the fire giant dance. It's your job around these fire giants as well as the other frontliner to make sure that they can't just like DPS it down to always have eyes on it so you can see the health of it. And then, um, dude, I could see the high ping in show right now. That was rough. The hammer always feel hammering. It always feels bad on the high ping. Nice to use of your ult there. Force the Achilles beads. Maybe you can get a nice wall off. On her still dead, so it's a 45. You guys just need to keep stalling until then. I don't think you guys need to really look for a huge fight until he's back up. You just need to keep stalling, making sure they're not on fire and all that. If they do start pulling fire as a frontliner, it's your job to get the hell in there and start a fight if you're trying to defend it. Sometimes you can give it up. You kind of just have to uh, assess the situation and what you want to do. Mercury's in right right now, so he could potentially get a Phoenix if you guys stall pretty hard. So if you just walk in here and make it awkward for them to do it, stun them on their fire giant pools, all that, this is so good for you guys. I don't think you're going to end up getting... Oh, you end up getting the Huyi. Nice try, nice try. I think you tried to hammer out there. You guys are going to get a Phoenix for it. You killed the Huyi. They got fire, but, I mean, you already killed somebody with it. This merch... Uh, he's getting thorns, unfortunate. Really not that bad. It's just a one for one right now, and they have fire, so it's obviously worth it. It was their Huyi, so... I think the way you played that fire giant fight was fine. But what we can learn from this is that it's a net win on the map right now. The longer you stall this, the better, because you can get a Phoenix. Obviously, because Merc is in right. But also, there's a chance for you to steal this right now, because your Disco is here. Uh, she has her ult up. She can maybe get it. There's also potential to literally get a Deicide right now. Look how much damage you guys are doing to these guys. If only you had your beads up during this, you probably would have gotten a double or maybe a triple kill. The Mantle proc actually killed the Huyi, though. That's kind of troll. I actually like your guys' team comp a lot more late game, so. Say TP War, which is good. Just say, you could say Place War for Teleport, so they know that you want to TP in. Ooh, unfortunately, he was able to hit his Impale. They're not placing their ward, dude. He had to TP to that one. That is unfortunate. That's a bit of a rough one. You guys lose here? Yeah, maybe you guys win that if he, you're able to TP a little bit sooner. <laughs> a little bit unfortunate. Yeah, VVVW is a good one. People usually recognize that pretty well. Place award for teleport. It's pretty. Un it's a pretty unique uh, VGS, you know. I barely missed your ult, but that's okay. 
I don't know if you guys should have been looking for that play. <gasps> oh my goodness! 20 health? Whoa, 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 whoa. All right, we gotta watch this. I thought the game was over. I don't know if you guys should be looking for this play when uh, they're running it down right that hard, but. Ooh, I would say maybe you're a little bit slow on the uh, defense here. It's about four seconds where you don't use anything, Slade. That could have cost you the game. I probably would have hammered or walled the uh, Huyi right away there. 20 health the Titan has. It lived with 20 health, and then you guys win the game. Okay. That's entertaining. That's fun. He says, I don't know, I'm the best. <laughs> well, that was a good game. Good stuff, Slade. Like I said, this is like a master's level game, so not as like you No, know, not as many mistakes to just like like those small mistakes that we can talk about, but I think the main thing we can learn from Slade in this game is uh that if you get a little bit tilted or maybe you get a little bit behind, maybe don't look for those plays that like, they're not as guaranteed. Like, the payoff isn't as guaranteed. And maybe um, the payoff is, isn't really even worth it. Like, maybe one kill. Like, always be worried about the waves. You know, waves are really important. Really, really important. And there were some micro things. And, like, you know, he did a couple things that, like, I think everybody does. Which is, like, you know, we talked about, like, using your escape when somebody's going to use their escape to run. You want to, like, save it to chase them down. But, um. But... Yeah, other than that, I mean, Slate's a good player, so some pretty good uh, stuff that you can learn from either way. Good wave management for the most part. And then in those late game fights, I think it was just kind of like how the fights were going based on your teammates. I think you kind of played them well. The good It was good that you were looking for the double taps with the walls, and um, your ults were fine. The only battle was when they all went to mid and you weren't able to reach them, so you weren't able to hit their carries. So all in all, not too, not too bad. Not too bad. Um... We need that support coaching. <sighs> Got to get somebody to do it, dude. I can't. I can't coach support. Maybe I could a little bit for like uh, beginner, intermediate, maybe even higher level players. But yeah, that's true, Slade. Don't forget about that. And not forget about that. All right, chat. I hope you guys enjoyed the coaching stream. That's gonna be it for me. We were able to get through five gameplays, and hopefully, you guys learned a thing or two. I don't know. I don't know if you did. Probably learned nothing, am I right? Nah, just but um But yeah. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the stream. And uh yeah, I'll try and do coaching streams more. They're very taxing. My voice is dead. Happy Fourth of July though. I love you all.